Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the Mad Mom Loops. I'm Mahi and I'm joined by my co hosts, Sheikh Hamer Saeed and Sim. On today's show, we are real excited for a long overdue guest. Uh, good friend of ours, uh, Omar Mazafar, who is the Muslim chaplain at Loyola University and is also a, I guess, a film guru. With uh, As I got your bio off the RogerEbert.com website, you know, raves about your movie credentials and whatnot. But, uh, uh, I, I want to preface this by saying, like, man, it's it's real real pleasure to have you on. Like, we've known you for for several years now, just on a personal level. Um, wanted to have you on. Obviously, uh, there's been some recent circumstances that uh have kind of triggered this show. Um, but we'll talk about some other things as well. But first of all, welcome, welcome to our studio. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. Uh, it's an honor to be here. And yes, I've known each of you for a few years. Sim and I, we go back at least twenty years. Yeah. Yeah. College of DuPage. I remember inviting Omar Muzaffar for, for for our MSA annual dinner. Actually, <laughs> that was quite the event, and uh, he we were on a different uh, understanding of Islam back then. And I think there was a lot of culture shock in that uh, conference. I I don't I don't know if you remember that. I think uh, I probably spoke about Al Fatiha. That's uh, yeah. what I always wanted to. I know. I, I remember people were grilling you about uh, the gay the group. <laughs> Did the, the great group about... Fatiha or the actual surah? No, no, no. Oh. No, the su- surah al-Fatiha. Oh, okay. Oh, I thought yeah. you were the LGBT like, group. What the heck are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. All righty. It's going to be a fun discussion, <laughs> inshallah. Yes, there we you go. We got the listeners yeah. already, yeah. Mahin. Um, yeah, yeah. But that was... I remember the quite Q&A session and people were grilling you about Ibn Hisham and... Mm-hmm. Uh, and <laughs> was after was like... What the hell did I get myself into over here? <laughs> I think I, I think uh, I always wind up somehow or other in the hot seat. Those are some good we, old days. we were a, we were a crazy MSA back then, though. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I, I commend you because I, I think you knew that mm-hmm. and coming into it, and yeah. you, were you, like, you were known not just by the initials MSA, but by two other initials. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, yeah. we won't get into that right now, but. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then, and then Sheikh Hamer is very, very famous in our community, mashallah, and he's also yeah. part of the, the gigantic Saeed clan. clan. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> Chicago, yeah. <laughs> right. And then, and then Mahin and I go back a couple years, too. Yeah, know, so but... I'm being, obviously not being a local. We met actually at Tahura in like 2009, 2010, I think, um, and Yasser Qadi was in town, so I think he was in town for some conference. Yeah, it was the AR, American Academy of Religion. Okay, yeah. and then we are at Osmania, and then I think you just have, were you at Tahura? I don't know if it was planned for him to meet you there or what, but yeah, I don't remember. But, you know, we just walk into Tahura, and you, yeah. you know, you know, he and he's like, you guys need to like. He's telling us like me and like Murphy and some of these other Chicago guys like, hey, um, you guys need to get to know this guy. And I think <laughs> Murphy's the only one that took it up. Maybe Murphy and Fice took up took up the offer. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I was like, what does this dude in the suit have to offer me, man? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you saying? probably had the best assessment right there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, so I, I it kind of went away, and then later. I know you. I saw you teaching some courses at Web Foundation, mm-hmm. and then I I did one of your courses there for a semester. And then whenever I needed to convert somebody to Islam, I brought them to you. <laughs> did they, did it work? No. <laughs> okay, so, <huh>. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're just they're they're like they agree with everything. They're just like I can't give up that pork, <laughs> 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 or some some other lame reason like oh, yeah. you know ISIS is bombing my family members in Europe mm. or something like that. <laughs> no. You know, and then like obviously the famous sto- the story that we so Omer, uh, <laughs> uh, so my uh, older daughter Hadia, she's four now. Mashallah. Um, when I was having her akika, uh, she was about two or three months old. Ubedallah Evans was supposed to be the speaker at the akika. It was at Orland Park, and Omer, I just invited Omer as a guest. So the akika was supposed to start at six p.m. Ubedallah calls me at like four thirty. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm picking up the cake and stuff. He's like, "Hey, Mahin, assalamu alaikum." Like, yeah, what's going on, Obed? He's like, yeah, yeah, I'm just letting you know, man. I'm just running a little late. Because I had an event in Toledo, Ohio. You know, but I'm on my way, though. I'll be there. And I'm like, okay, Obed, like, when did you actually leave Toledo? And he's like, ah, oh, about 20 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, that's like a three-hour drive or something. So then I call Omar up, and I'm like, hey, um, I know I asked you as a guest, but can you, like, just say a few words at the Akika? Because I wasn't sure if he was going to make it. Well, he and- probably... Could have got there. Hey, doesn't he drive like a? Park? He did. He he GT3, made it eventually. He was eleven GT three or something. Yeah. Back then he didn't have that. Okay, but he was. Uh, he, he I think he was going like one hundred and ten, one hundred twenty. His he he made it yeah. there. His wife like when she got 
to our Akika, she told me, man, I thought I was going to die. <laughs> <laughs> Obeyed was going crazy, you know, trying to get to the Akika, going 100 miles an hour. <laughs> but long story short, he spoke at the end, but Omer spoke at the beginning mm-hmm. uh, before he got there. And uh, so he gets up there and he starts talking about like. <laughs> yeah, I just talked about how wonderful the name Sada is. Sada is such a beautiful name, <laughs> such and such and such. All of a sudden I hear, Sada is my wife's name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had to run up on. I was trying to. I thought about texting him. I'm like, he's got the wrong name. The baby's name is Hadia. My wife's name is Sara. But, but, so he should talk uh, about Hadia, right? But I started talking about how beautiful the name Ferdos is, <laughs> genital Ferdos. He's like, that's her middle name. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Or that's my middle name and her last name. Yeah. 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 He's, he still ain't got it right. Still don't know. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it's, it's always good times. It's but beautiful, uh, man. So what's what's been new on your end? What's been going on? I mean, nothing really. Uh, uh, now that we answered who is Omar Muzaffar no. for uh, Daniel, because uh, Daniel wants to know. Uh, uh, that's that, interesting because yeah. Daniel was, uh, uh, he co-founded a fan page uh, for me some 15 years ago. Oh, and wow. he also published uh, a journal. Uh, and asked me to write for it. So that's strange that I think he's forgotten who I am. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I think, think, I think it's pretty cool. I think I asked him to elaborate. I, I told him about uh, you being called in as a mediator, and mm-hmm. and then we talked about that. So, but we'll 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 table that for mm-hmm. for later. We'll get back to it. Mm-hmm. And uh, we we've wanted you on for so long. And it seems like we've got you on at just the right time mm. on our show. So talk to us a little bit about what happened uh, the past few weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, just just running by us uh, from the week of, um, I know there's been a lot of theories that everyone has mm-hmm. had mm-hmm. about um, what's transpired for for so long. Maybe maybe you can help clear up everything. Sure. I mean, I'll try. I try, inshallah, to uh, my best to answer uh, all your questions and to do so as directly as possible. Uh, so, as everyone's well aware, I I posted uh, on social media uh, uh, about this case that I was working on regarding, you know, one of our beloved community uh, members, one of our beloved community speakers, uh, um, addressing uh, misconduct. Um, um, uh, related to a case that I had personally been working on for about three months, and uh, others had been working on a little bit longer, and and so uh, everything that I expected to happen from that point happened. But I should ask the first question: Why did I go on social media of all the different places? And there's a couple of answers to this. And the, and first and foremost, the the question was to figure out how to make um, my posting authentic. Uh, and so we had different thoughts uh, when I worked on a previous case that you're all familiar with, uh, I, po- I posted on my own personal blog, meaning this way people know it's coming from me. And and I thought about making a blog again because that blog is on hold because that case is still pending. Or I thought making an article in medium.com. Uh, and even there was a whole media, media strategy, uh, but uh, I wanted to avoid the media uh, as, as much as possible just because of all the different ways that that, that uh, could become problematic. And so the best answer that I could come up with was to send it from my own Facebook account. Um, I even thought about setting up a, like a Facebook page about all this. But if I set it, send it from my own Facebook account, that's the most that I could guarantee for authenticity. Now, regarding why do it on social media anyway, uh, part of the argument, uh, part of the, uh, the view is that it's going to go to social media immediately. So whether it's posted through uh, a major news corporation or whether it's posted elsewhere, it's going to go onto Facebook uh, right Inevitably, away. Anyway. Yeah. yeah, and so, uh, so I mean that's that's those are some of the core reasons for why on. And, and some people think that these are the only two cases that you've worked on before. Yeah, I right? mean, so so one case that people are familiar with is the Abdullah Salim case, and the other one is this one, Noman Ali Khan. Uh, Abdullah Salim is not even the first case that I worked on. Uh, I worked on probably about 11 cases regarding uh, Muslim preachers. Then I've also worked on other cases regarding other people in other fields and their misconduct. Yeah. yeah. And and what kind of got you into this? Because a lot of people are curious that, you know, um, some people, may, it may come across some people, you know, what I've heard is um, who made him responsible for this, who yeah. kind of made him to police these you know these individuals. Mm-hmm. You know, this is uh, this is not anything that I ever had any interest in. It's more I just happen to be, however you want to put it, at the wrong place at the wrong time or the right place at the right time. You know, the the very first case uh, was involving uh, a particular scholar who who um, unfortunately, I mean, uh, who got caught also doing inappropriate things, 
and people knew that I that I had a relationship with this scholar, and that's why I was pulled in, right? Uh, in the case of the Abdullah Salim situation, um, there were people who, who uh, the victim who had had spoken to, who were my students, and and they had approached me, right? Um, and students here in Chicago. Students here in Chicago. Oh wow! Yeah, and and uh, and so a lot of it just happens to be that I'm connected to people. And so people are turning to me for advice, and especially after the Salim case, then a lot more people started turning to me for for advice on on matters uh, across the country. And again, not limited to not limited to sheikhs or anything like that. So the previous eleven cases, for instance, yeah, um, did the, the after do, dealing with the first case, did you just realize that okay? People saw that I had kind of had credibility with this first case, and now they're coming to me to all these other cases. I think, uh, or is it just that you kind of thought that okay, there's a problem here, mm-hmm. and no one's doing anything about it, so I have to kind of run after it? Um, I'd say even neither of those. Uh, the first few cases, at best, we could probably say it's coincidence, right? That uh, I got pulled into one and I got pulled into another. Uh, they're not even related to each other, even remotely. Uh, but in working on the second and third case, then I became exposed to a lot of things that we are keeping as a community under under the rug, mm. and uh, for the sake of uh, at least preserving a status quo or preserving the iman of people, and and there's some virtue in that. I mean, this was part of the deliberation for every single case that I worked on. That okay, how do we how do we address the the problem at hand in such a way that uh, Neither side is getting oppressed, meaning the uh, the victim I take as speaking the truth and the alleged perpetrator or the accused I take uh, also as speaking the truth or innocent until found otherwise. And because it's a very, very narrow walk that if you if you go purely on the side of the victim, then you're risking uh, violating the rights of, of the perpetrator, even if the perpetrator is guilty. Mm. Right. And and it's also even easier not to give the victim whatever it is that he or she, in some cases he, but many cases she, needs, whether we're talking about protection, whether we're talking about support or, or counseling, what have you. I see. You know, the the there's a, the last part of the Day of Judgment, or one of the last parts of the Day of Judgment is when you're walking, you know, across the Sirat, right? And and then we're taught that it's sharp as a hair, uh, sharp as a knife and thin as a hair, right? And that's exactly the feeling of community work, that if you take one wrong step, you're going to hell, right? Mm. Because we're not dealing with uh, a simple matter of domestic abuse. I've been called into many of those cases more because of my chaplaincy work. But we're talking about someone who is a leader, a teacher for for many other people. Why are you being called in for these cases when Mm -hmm. they can be going to the authorities? Like These are abuse cases that are, it seems like, Clear mm-hmm. cut that that these things should uh, these should be handled by the court of law. Sure. Uh, so there's a couple answers to that. Why am I being contacted now? Just because of uh, people have gotten familiar with the fact that I've been involved and I have experience, right? Uh, but then the question becomes: Is the is the actual civil law being violated, right? And and because we or, heard words such as predatorial, and that's pretty that's that that raises a lot well, of because you know, predator so. it reminds me being a father of three daughters yeah. i think about a creepy guy in a van sure. looking to stalk on my daughters you know? sure so so the other question becomes is islamic law being violated uh in terms of, of things like uh, some of the terminology predatorial conduct yeah usually we'll think of someone with with minors so in this uh, this last case there's no minors involved uh there's no zina involved right uh, but when we speak of someone who is uh, following a repeated pattern of the same behavior, uh, then it becomes predatory. Are you talking about serial divorce marriages? I mean, serial divorce marriages. So, I mean, let's make this much wider that it's very, very common uh, for a charismatic uh, speaker um, who's, who's gotten uh, caught doing these things that the pattern you find over and over again is that the, the preacher will have many, many fangirls following Right. Uh, and and the preacher will talk to them and will will either invite or will will have other people invite the uh, uh, these women to come to, you know, to come to some private classes. Right. right. You know, to teach them more. And then this is not the case. This is not the case with this last one that I worked on, the big one. But um, with so many of these cases, the the preacher then. You know, we'll we'll have conversations with all these students, and with one of the students, we'll say, you know, I, I saw you in a dream, and and we'll express that that must mean that there's something special about you, right? 
and and then uh, the and then the preacher will get closer to the student, and then we'll get into you know uh, we'll start making mention of even more graphic dreams that you know it would not be appropriate for us to share here but very, so it's kind of a luring in process that's exactly it yeah. and if we don't want to call it uh predatory we could call it fishing but that that this specific instance was not the case for this previous so so if there are a lot of time i know you're legally yeah. bound by things we all respect that yeah, yeah yeah i mean yeah i should also mention that um yeah um you know for everyone who's listening together yeah, i will be i will try to answer as directly as i can but yeah there's some things that just because um this is an ongoing situation um um uh, uh, I'll try to be cautious uh, uh, in my language. But uh, here um, we have, I mean, this is all like public now, but here we have the case of uh, someone who is approaching other women, uh, but they don't know his whole story in terms of what he is approaching them with right? in the conversation about marriage. And and so, uh, uh, Meaning the it becomes predatorial when you have someone who is in a position of authority, who is uh, repeatedly going through the same steps, um, um, and almost to the point of repeating some of the same language with multiple people. Yeah. So I kind of see. So when you were asking why are they coming to him, so there's nothing. It's nothing legal for him yeah. to. It's not legal. Uh, it's not predatory. You know, in, in a legal sense by yeah. any means. But since you are a chaplain. Mm-hmm. You have to deal with social issues on a on a regular basis. Yeah, I mean this is daily. Yeah, well, I mean I'm, I'm I, just saying, I just made that connection. I'm but. just wondering, like, why why doesn't Brother Muzaffar just say, "Hey, here, you know, here's the number to so and so attorney or whoever mm-hmm. you know who can get you in touch with the right authorities?" Mm-hmm. Because it seems like mm-hmm. you know that if it is abuse, it should be handled by the right. So you're saying even right, if it's yeah, something illegal. spiritual in sense, it can still be legal. Yeah, it can still be That's, legal because yeah, I, I think mean, uh, there ahead. there has been some talk on social media. By by some people that the, you know Texas doesn't uh, doesn't recognize consensual relationships mm-hmm. with oh uh, uh, yeah clergy uh, or clergy, clergy yeah. Yeah. people of clergy so those those kind of things could have been you know mm-hmm. reeled in from the beginning it, so, and I'm saying and a lot of this is Monday morning quarterback yeah. so I know that as well so so uh, when uh, when it's clear or even if it seems to be the case that the law has been broken. Uh, a lot of times those are the easiest cases because then, you know, I say go straight to the police, right? I don't need to do anything else. But a lot of times I'm being pulled in only because of experience. I mean, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a therapist. Uh, um, just because of experience that uh, uh, I can give advice on how to handle these things. In this last case, uh, there isn't anything clear indicating that that the law has been broken there's been some laws that have been brought up like what you just mentioned uh, after the fact right but uh keep in mind it's also this is not just me uh this is me in constant conversation uh getting advice from therapists from lawyers from scholars uh so it's not just me walking in like like i'm some superhero or anything like that yeah it's uh there's a lot of people who who then are getting pulled into the conversation right? and it's not um, i mean the way I mean, just just thinking about it, there obviously was a process where you have to discuss with these people, sit down with these yeah. individuals, you know, who are who who are, who are involved in this, mm-hmm. um, and you have to, I'm pretty sure, have lengthy conversations. Yeah. I don't think, you know, the way it seems, I don't think that it was just you found out about it and you posted on social no, media. No, no, I mean, Do, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure you had to have, and without mentioning names, yeah, with all 13 cases or whatever, mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure you had to sit down and have lengthy conversations, and mm-hmm. then they weren't convinced. Mm-hmm. And then is that why you decided to go public because there's nothing else happening, no remedy for this now? So, so uh, in terms of going public, uh, usually, or I should say in all the cases where people have known me to go public, it's been almost the very last resort. And the only resort beyond that would be then to go to the media itself, right? Uh, and the media would be the last, last resort. And that's only primarily in the case uh, when the law is broken. And what I mean by that is that, okay, if, if, uh, if the law is broken and the police are involved, um, they do their investigation, but they also have a stack of who knows how many other cases. And this is at the bottom. And then the strategy you take is that, all right, how do you give this priority? You get it in the media, and now this has become a priority issue. Right, and so in in the the, the previous popular case, uh, you know, we went to the media. We found someone uh, who who would accept the narrative that we wanted presented, mm. right? That these are uh, these are community issues that the community is handling, right? 
and then two year, two days later uh, the person was arrested right and and so uh as you know with with the case, with the media as much as you control the narrative you know who knows how many other different directions this could take i mean yeah. i was contacted by by international media on this case uh for for uh the past 2 weeks cuz you uh, have international figures yeah yeah um i mean pretty much every big media uh, outlet had contacted me Oh right. wow, we feel pretty special right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, just to recap some. So, yeah. I I, th I think I understand why people come to you because like pe people who know you personally mm -hmm. know that you're a guy that people trust, Inshallah. right? Inshallah. But not only that, dude, he's a chaplain. I mean, yeah, he's a dude, chaplain. People you, have to come, yeah, to him mm -hmm. for religious reasons. You know, it, like mm -hmm. like I mentioned earlier, like when I have somebody like who's interested in Islam, mm -hmm. I don't like if I can get if I if I can choose between me talking to them or Omer. I bring him to Omar if he's you know, we, and he's and there's platforms for that, right? Mm -hmm. So I think people feel are comfortable with you. Is the question is the real so, thing? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I I appreciate that, and hopefully, inshallah, uh, um, that can be sustained. Uh, and I mean, yeah, people outside of Chicago don't know me, and I've consciously tried to keep it that way. Uh, I mean, my my focus, uh, my primary focus uh, is on the students at Loyola, but just because of my long history in Chicago. Um, I get pulled into all types of issues, uh, whether we're talking about people with faith problems, people who are interested in Islam, domestic violence, uh, the whole nine yards. Yeah, sure. So uh, a lot of people have been saying that you know the the term abuse is just uh, such a vague word. Mm -hmm. I think many people are saying that these were bad decisions that were made by. Uh, both parties mm -hmm. involved in the case, and they're mm -hmm. saying the word throwing the word abuse with this recent case. Mm -hmm. um, you you're kind of opening a, a can of worms that you know that can lead people to many different their awful imaginations things, run wild yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And, and to echo what sim said i, I don't because because people are portraying the people that we're talking to is that you know the onus even though like we, we acknowledge that it's a consensual relationship mm -hmm. people are like putting 100 percent of the onus on this preacher mm -hmm. i i went to um no man's facebook like a couple weeks ago after mm -hmm. he made his rebuttal mm -hmm. and their sisters commenting like, "If you were single, I would definitely marry you." Really? I mean, there's stuff like that's yeah. like on Facebook, like like it, it, like when you as a speaker, you're, you're a guy, mm -hmm. you know. If you if people on your Facebook posts are like, you know, right right now you're in a market, right? So they're like, you know, so <laughs> if you're, you know, hey, if you were available, Omar, I, I'd definitely marry you. you know, if you're seeing that as a preacher on Facebook. You know, what do you... Well, I mean... Like, th that, that gets to your head real quick as a dude. It doesn't matter what kind of religious knowledge you have, right? Yeah, I mean, I'll answer that a few ways. One, uh, yeah, of course, that, that uh, I mean, shaitan is relentless against everyone, and, and those would be the easiest ways for, for, for shaitan to, to, to get into your head, get into your heart, right? I mean, that's... When, if, if you have a preacher who's telling you, no, none of this affects me, uh, that's probably a preacher who is such a welly of a law that they probably wouldn't be talking to you anyway but um <laughs> uh, on top of that uh they're probably not being honest with themselves mm -hmm. right uh, i mean we do have to be honest with ourselves about about uh you know whatever it is that that tempts us uh, we have to be honest with ourselves about our biology as well and i, I think and, with the episode with daniel i, I said specifically that yeah. you know if, if i was in uh no one's position i would i would totally have succumbed to that Mm -hmm. I, 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 Meaning I know somebody for sure. was throwing lines yeah, at you. Someone, yeah. someone who has that kind of sway on people, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's something that is so easy to fall into. Absolutely. And I, I feel like, you know, some of the, some of the people who have been commenting on social media have been, you know, saying things that they wouldn't say if they, if they mm -hmm. knew really how, how much pressure they, that kind of, uh, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, position holds, and yeah, and they haven't been tested at that level. Obviously, right? You know, may Allah protect us. I mean, you know, even if any of us get to that level, that uh, you know, it's it's not a it's not an easy thing to deal with. You mm -hmm. know, especially if you're traveling all the time, you're on the mm -hmm. road all the time. I, I mean, look, you, you're a professor, mm -hmm. right? And you you're, you work in colleges, and there's a lot of young, mm -hmm. beautiful women who work at, uh, who you might have to work with and come across uh, in in conversation. I mean. No, do you, do you ever feel, do you do you ever feel like um, someone's you, hitting on me? Yeah, you know, you could take advantage of a situation, or maybe you know, maybe somebody is uh, w would make a worthy wife for mm -hmm. you, you know, or maybe pursue that kind of conversation, you know, so that you could uh, um, explore uh, a marital relationship with, and 
and all of a sudden you have to think about you know that oh wait i'm in a position of power mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know yeah i mean i mean i think anyone who who is a professor or a speaker would have to answer yes to that question right and that's even if they are married this is uh this is uh the reality of of biology at the very least right i mean one of the blessings about about my job uh in terms of the way my office is set up is that it has a giant window overlooking an atrium with a staircase just not too far away and it's common for students to look inside and it's as far as i know there's no stigma for students visiting me and there's no students no stigma for students even crying in my office and it's people can see outside who's in my office and then my other side of my office also has a window so people within the our suite our office suite can also look inside yeah. and so this allows for a privacy in the sense that people cannot hear conversations um and yet it is very very easy uh, to 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 see inside and it, had that not been you know my, how my office was designed where let's say it was all just walls uh i would probably i would absolutely have to figure out a different way to keep things you know halal uh, to keep things as safe in in those privacy matters to keep privacy and yet to keep things safe that's right. awesome right the last yeah. thing i wanted to comment like Please. all of us are like you know I assume we weren't like the popular jocks. Like, you, you got some height on you. You were probably like a linebacker in high school. Um, <laughs> not even close, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> I thought he's gonna be like, um, yeah, I was. <laughs> not even video games. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, you're like in the Star Wars. We're probably all like the awkward kid, okay, and, like yeah, I was a nerd, yeah. right? And, and so back then, I remember in high Don't school, say man. Awkward kid, man. Just say a nerd. Nerds in though. Don't say awkward. Bro. Back, back in the he's day, like, uh, I, was, right? I was a nerd. I was awkward. I was <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, b- b- back in the day, remember high school, man, you're like looking all at, at the jocks who get all the chicks, and you're like, damn, I wish I was that dude, man. And now you're like, and then you become the celebrity chick, and now you got girls coming at you. So you're like, oh, snap. It's like, I, I can, you know, so you know, you know what I mean? Like, no, no, I haven't been there. I don't know. Yeah, I'm I've not been there either. <laughs> People so. don't even know me, dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, but like, the, 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 that's again, the, the, that's like the mind. Yeah. The, that's like the mindset of our culture. It's like, hey, you missed out. Now it's a chance for you to yeah. like kind of make up on many levels too, for the last time, right? I like. I see the same thing. I don't mean to change the subject, no, but please. I see the same thing with mustards a lot of times. Mm-hmm. Where a lot of uh, a lot of uh, people, even though they've done amazing work, mm-hmm. um, they feel like they have power now. Like people always talk about the boards, and now it's the last bit that they have strings holding on to to, mm-hmm. be, to have power, and they enforce their power and show that they have some type of might, mm-hmm. even though it's in a small community of you know, you know, a thousand people or something. But I, I think it happens on all levels too, man. Yeah, you know, I mean, they couldn't yeah. exercise it then. If they don't have you know um, enough control, they'll they'll definitely exercise when they're older. You know, they missed mm-hmm. out on a lot. Of years, you know. Sure. Yeah, I mean that seems to be the case. Like the people who have the least try to exercise it the most, yeah. right? I mean the the joke that I have with my students, class after class, is that you know as a teacher I have no power. The only power I have is to scare you about your grades. And just <laughs> That's true. Have I'm you convinced that, that you're going to get an F? You know, you're probably going to get an A minus. Yeah. yeah, your your posts on that are pretty. Your students that show up that yeah. always message you like. Yeah, I'm not making the class. You're like, you know, haven't been all semester. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, you're, you're talking about his Facebook post. His Facebook <laughs> post, right? Um, but the whole concept of like, okay, criminal something is criminal. Like this specific case right yeah. here, people are saying there's no criminal law. Mm-hmm. So there's a camp that's saying because there's no criminal law, why are we like even discussing it? Sure, it's something that should be handled mm-hmm. um, in the hereafter. A law at, will at take the care. Mo- of- yeah, at the most, this is a, a private sin, mm-hmm. and this this is nobody's business. But those those people who are in involved in that mm-hmm. that situation so what are your thoughts on that so so we have to distinguish between a couple of different types of community efforts right so one the way people are understanding this is that is this is some effort at community justice um, that doesn't work right um, this is not an effort at community justice uh, a second is to be morality policing and that is uh, actually very dangerous because you run the risk of pointing fingers at everyone else and while you're doing the same thing right this is basically alerting the community uh of of problems that people have tried to work on to protect the the community or and as well as to protect the uh the the person from himself and and so this is uh, uh more of an announcement or an act of essentially protecting or trying to prevent future victims right so this is this is no attempt to get justice uh, i don't know how justice would play out like this if we did and thus, when people are speaking of kangaroo courts and stuff like that, yeah, that would apply if this was an attempt. Well, I'm glad you made that clarification yeah. because a lot of times when the, the situation like this happens, you have such a big personality, mm-hmm. you have multiple people working on a case, right? Yeah. So someone can ask, like, why are you the only one that yeah. released a statement, you know? Yeah. 
Yeah. Because, so, yeah, because well, he why, knows so many go, people. Let's mm-hmm. explore, explore that. Why mm-hmm. were you the only one who released so, a statement? So I won't get into the specifics yeah. of, of in this specific case, uh, but uh, a lot of times uh, people have a lot of concerns in terms of what can happen in terms of retaliation. Uh, or people have concerns about what can happen to their families. Uh, I mean, uh, that's been a common theme. And and uh, in my case, also, uh, uh, there's less to lose, right? I mean, I'm an unknown figure, uh, for the most part, outside of Chicago. Uh, and and so uh, I'm willing to, to basically come forward and just be straightforward and say, here's what's going on, right? knowing full well exactly what will happen in response and and almost 100 percent of what i expected to happen has happened right i mean people even suggested on that one particular post that i should shut off comments but i wanted to give the whole community the opportunity to vent meaning uh when i think of the community i think of the community like i think of my family members or like my children and all you guys have children, right? Yeah. yeah mashallah. So, so when you're giving your child an injection or a vaccination at the doctor's office, your child starts screaming, and uh, because you've just hit your child with such pain, uh, for the child's sake, and that's what we saw, right? We could look at it as though all these people are full of hate and vengeance against me. Um, I look at it as uh, I've just hit them with with a vaccination, and and it hurts, right? And they responded exactly how I expected them to. Yeah. So it's kind of like kind of like the scenario, you know, without mentioning any names or cases. Yeah. Let's say Sim, we had some dirt on Sim, right? Yeah. Oh, you and, can find plenty of dirt on me. No, that's fine. I'm glad I'm not in uh, any official authority of <laughs> no, anything. We know, you know? No, we know. We know. Mashallah, he's probably yeah, the mashallah. purest guy here. Mashallah. Good guy, Mashallah. But let's just say that we do, right? Example's sake. And um, you come forward, and we all wanted to come forward. Mm-hmm. But at the end, me and Mahin were good dip. Like, yo, guys, yeah, man, we can't take this backlash, bro. We got all this going for us. Mm-hmm. We got all this, man. We travel a lot. You know, mm-hmm. we, we got a whole lot of fans. Or not even fans. Yeah. We got a whole lot of responsibilities. Lot and of we sneakers. can't get tangled up in this, mm-hmm. you know. But even though we agreed or somewhat a verbal agreement, maybe mm-hmm. a lighthearted agreement, but you're the only one that goes forth because mm-hmm. you feel you have a lot less to lose. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you say I'm going forth anyway. It's up to you guys. But like, yeah, yeah, we'll do it. We'll do it. Mm-hmm. But then at the last second, you post, and then you're waiting for the next mm-hmm. <laughs> next post. And me and mine aren't posting anything about yeah. them. I guess that's, that's kind of what you're referring to, right? The kind of yeah. I mean, uh, I won't say that people were concerned as much about their reputations as much as they were about about their families, and in some cases, even their own physical health. Because okay. uh, this can be something extremely stressful. Yeah. Right. Um, uh, both in terms of just listening to what people are saying about you, but more concerned about your children and, and what they're going to take from this. Yeah. Right. And I can imagine other people, someone could accuse them. Like if you knew for so long, how yeah. come you didn't tell anybody, yeah. you know, because we have to be honest, man, everyone wants to know everyone's information. Yeah, I mean, course. that's, that's why Facebook was yeah. born as a social media was born yeah. to take the whole aspect, that curiosity that mm-hmm. humans have to capitalize on that yeah, to stalk and to it. bring it out yeah. and make it nor- and normalize it. Right. Mm-hmm. So, you guys are all on social media. How come no one ever talked about it? So that can be yeah. a backlash too. Yeah. Right. You, you know, yeah. I mean, one of the main things is that a lot of pe- a lot of our listeners after this show will say, you know, why didn't Omar Muzaffar work with, mm-hmm. you know, some larger Islamic organizations like mm-hmm. ISNA or ICNA mm-hmm. and, you know, form a committee for these type of things. And then so that something, an official entity, uh, you know, an official investigation happened, you know, and then there was a, a, a a press release or something that that could have uh, could come out of this rather mm-hmm. than a Facebook post. Do you do you ever think about how you went about that? So, uh, uh, when I worked on one of the, the 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 previous cases, one of my teachers out here um, suggested to form a committee of people with assorted levels of of skills, professional skills, as well as you know different outlooks in terms of the, being on the spectrum of 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 Islam or what we call within orthodoxy. And that has been very, very difficult to form over the years, uh, a lot of times because we would like to think that the liberals are the open-minded ones and the conservatives are the closed-minded ones. But in my experience, it's actually the other way around, that the liberals tend to be the most judgmental and, and the conservatives tend to be, at the community level, tend to be uh, a lot more willing to, to, to work with others. And so, uh, so every attempt I had prior to this over the years to, to form such a team has been very, very difficult. And I now almost have this team formed, right? 
that's one issue. In terms of, of speaking with, with national organizations, uh, they were discussed, right? They, uh, not uh, by me directly, uh, but other people that were working on, on the team on this last case. Uh, people were spoken to. And even like the, the, the posting that I did, that's probably the 30th draft. This is not just, you know, I just wrote something and let's post it. It's draft that I gave to different people to review. And and the wording that you saw um, was the, uh, was essentially the the end result of draft after draft after draft. Oh wow! And and even okay, you know, should we go public? Uh, I discussed with a lot of people, right? A lot of people who are in uh, who are in those ca- in the case, people who I've worked with on other cases, people uh, even in my family, uh, people among friends, asking for you know what's your input. Um, you know, should I do it this way? Should I do it that way? And as you would imagine, I received, you know, the whole spectrum of, of opinions. Yeah. And, and so there is a lot of deliberation that, that people would not see. But again, I knew that going in. When, at what point was it where you decided, like, you know, uh, this mediation has come to an end? I cannot... Uh, the boiling uh, point. I I, yeah, I can't go... I can't, we can't continue this any longer. Yeah, I mean, this, this, is, this is what I mentioned in the posting. That, yeah. Uh, that uh, I received word that that uh, that you know he was giving public speeches, and then I asked people for evidence, you know, verification. Like if it's a khutbah, then get the person who's the head of the khutbah, who's the head of the masjid, to to give confirmation or get a video or something like that. And then we got more evidence of, of more talks, and then more talks, and and so then the deal was broken, right? Uh, and and then uh, I had to face the question of, all right, okay, if the deal is broken, then the agreement is that we go public. Uh, but even then, I wanted to talk to him some more. And what's fascinating is on the on the exact day, if not the exact moment, uh, it was almost exactly the same moment that I was getting ready to contact him. All of us got letters from his attorney, and so now it became a legal matter uh, or, or a, a matter of litigation. Were you guys in any way, um, those people who were involved in the mediation process, was there any changing of the rules that has that happened during the mediation process that made it difficult for him to continue that course of mediation? Because um, I think that that's one of the things that happens uh, when after people start breaking the agreements mm-hmm. that, that were made, things start becoming difficult. Were, were you guys squeezing him in, in, in any way? So uh, I would say that uh, there were a couple of moments where me taking the authority as mediator, I changed a few things. Uh, and whether it came across to his side or not, it was for his sake. And one was basically how would the leadership in Dallas be informed? The original plan was was to do a conference call. Um, and then I decided a conference call is something that cannot be controlled. And so it would be an in-person meeting. Um, the, the way he presented it in his response was that this was done while he was out of the country, so he couldn't respond, which was definitely not in our intentions. And that was not a complaint that was raised to me, uh, by his side and, and his side, people speaking on his behalf did complain to me that this was not what was agreed upon. And then, you know, I acknowledged, um, you know, in a text message that they had it in writing, I acknowledged their, their complaint, mm-hmm. um, it's probable that from from his side's perspective, uh, the the rules were broken quite a few times. Um, me, you know, trying to be involved with every single aspect of this, I didn't feel that that was the case, especially having worked on multiple cases. Well, also from um, the side that was in the mediation process, there were a lot of leaks coming out, mm-hmm. and I feel like you know, me and Mahin, we've been involved in some private conversations that I can't divulge, but yeah. Um, we know of many people who are spreading information that mm-hmm. can only uh, th- this type of information can ha- can only have been attained from uh, the scholars who were involved yeah. in this mediation. Mm-hmm. So it seemed like from the outside, from us, uh, the Mad Mom Luke's, just looking mm-hmm. at it uh, externally, we're seeing um, a kind of a conditioning process. Like, okay, maybe there it's like a controlled leaking that mm-hmm. uh, is trying to change the course of yeah, conversation. This, was, this wasn't for me. Uh, I will say that uh, uh, the the day or two after my post, there is that website, um, and we were asking each other, okay, did you guys do this? You know, were you involved with this? You know, who who did this, right? And and so uh, somehow information was getting out. And I keep, uh, I don't know if you saw the statement from his former employees. Right. Um, yeah. And so, uh, I mean, in terms of, by the way, if, uh, any any listeners out there who aren't on Facebook, you just won't get a lot of this references. Yeah. So yeah. that's too bad. 
get get a fake name and get on Facebook if you really are that interested. Okay. <laughs> so so the basic point being that um, uh, even though there is the core group involved with the case, there are a lot of people who are in in the cloud of the case itself, right? Um, so it's possible that that this news is coming from all sorts of different directions. There were accusations, as there have been in just about every single case I worked on, that you know one person has a personal vendetta um, against against the accused uh, the accused perpetrator, and or there's a big conspiracy against the accused perpetrator. Like most recently, someone's been posting that this is a rivalry of businesses mm. uh, in Dallas, which is kind of absurd because. If one succeeds, they all succeed, and if one fails, then a lot of them, the other two, will 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 suffer. Because they're all connected somehow. Exactly. They all work with each other. I mean, they're all connected, and they all benefit from just the the industry of 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 disseminating Islamic knowledge. Exactly, and you know? and just to make something clear, yeah. is that even though I mean you seem to be at the forefront of mediating this, mm-hmm. there were other people in the process and scholars mediating things mm-hmm. also, right? Yeah. You're not the only one who, because this is, <coughs> because people, some people that I spoke to, this is what I wanted clarification on too, is because, you know, is that people, some people have the idea that you're spearheading everything and this is your project and you're no. working on this alone. No. You're the only mediator. You're the authority on this project. Who made you authority? Yeah. So that has to be clear too that you're not the only one. It just mm-hmm. seems like that because you made that post, right? Mm-hmm. But there's other scholars, right? And that's a key point people want to hear is there's scholars involved too. The, 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 that the scholars who, who are involved are, are people of very, very big names that, that by and large uh, represent different outlooks within our Islamic tradition, and and they're all very very well known. And, and to respected. that, the agreement was made to that basic, if you want to say, panel yeah. of not having public speeches or, yes. or public arrangements and yeah. stuff. And yeah, so I, I do want to go back to what's uh, digging a little bit what Sim was alluding to, come from our perspective. So and, and, and well, before you start that, we just I just want to let our listeners know that there is a conflict of interest that um, Mahin and. Myself, Sim, uh, we work with Yaqeen Institute and we work with Omar Suleiman okay, that's very good. closely. Yeah, I didn't even know that. Yeah. So we just wanted to make sure that the listeners know. But we, we have done uh, our best to be fair towards mm-hmm. uh, both sides in this. And, yeah, we're also, not, and just let make everyone know we're not, we're not taking sides yeah. on yeah. anybody. We just no. want the truth of the matter. Right. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I'll just talk to you as like our thought because I think we all, the three of us, Sheikh Amr, Sim, and I have similar thought process. Mm-hmm. We first heard about something like we heard about this situation a few, several months ago, mm-hmm. right? And and we had no reason to like not believe it because of the people who were telling us, right? We actually used Mona Hayder's song about dogs mm. as a way to talk about it. So, yeah, like, the, the, I, I was not a fan at all of that video. Uh, yeah. I will, I love that song. Yeah. Oh, oh, no. just stop. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> but like, so if, if you want to go back a few months, like we we had heard about it, we had no reason to like not buy into anything, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and we were just like, well, and we're like, oh, it's it's there at some point. It'll come out, but mm-hmm. whatever. It is what it is. Yeah. Your statement comes out. We're like, all right, it's out. Mm-hmm. You know, and then the next day the rebuttal comes mm-hmm. and then the website. Mm-hmm. And now then you've got all and now, but now you see people coming from a scholarly discussion. Mm-hmm. You have people out there saying that like like what Sim is this is a private matter, mm-hmm. why is it being put out? And mm-hmm. then you're talking to people who are like like the generalities of spiritual abuse mm-hmm. and people are plugging things in like, oh, it could be some kind of conflict of interest. Like people are like saying this well, like the, underneath. Well, people are also waiting for confirmation from other people, right, yeah. and it seems like from the outside, from just our own internal discussions here, mm-hmm. we're like, okay, well, who's going to come back up on Muzaffar? Yeah, and it seems like everyone just kind of ran away. At least from the out. That's what we. That's what from, we're looking from at. What it was apparent. It yeah, just, we we were, we were thinking. Okay, this there's a, a certain. Um, atmosphere being propagated a few days before. We mm-hmm. see a lot of passive aggressive Facebook posts mm-hmm. by people in the community, mm-hmm. you know. And, and then some were very active aggressive too. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like r- r- rating Bayana one star active, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And then people are like, I saw that. <laughs> you know. Yeah, um, so then we see yours. And then so we're like, okay. And then for us, it's just like, we don't know. Like, uh, listen, like, we're not in on the case. We have no reason to like distrust the people who told us. Mm-hmm. But now other people of knowledge who we respect. Mm-hmm. Are coming out and saying on Facebook that even though they don't know, they're like, "This is we're now breaking the protocol of Islamic law, mm-hmm. the way this is being handled." Mm-hmm. Yeah, and for me, honestly, I, I was never interested in this whole thing. I really didn't care. Mm-hmm. But for me, there's one thing that I wanted to prove to the people mm-hmm. is that 
scholars, no matter who they are, or their speakers, or mm-hmm. they specialize in in one in one subject of the Islamic sciences, they're always going to be people, mm-hmm. right? And we can't take that away mm-hmm. from them. We can't take humanness away from them. Mm-hmm. And this should never, because I I see people in, when and some statements and they're like see i told you all along these scholars and these mullahs and these preachers yeah. are all the same and that you see and, the, and and that's a small fraction of them right that's mm-hmm. going to be in every field that's going to mm-hmm. be with other religions it's going to be with engineers it's going to be with it it's going to be with doctors and their you know, receptionists or their secretaries it's those kind of things are always going to be there mm-hmm. between males and females the only reason why i wanted to get involved in this whole issue is to clarify and then set the stage to say, hey, look, everyone's a human being mm-hmm. and everyone needs to face justice if mm-hmm. need be. Mm-hmm. And if they don't face it in this dunya, then we leave it to the court of the akhirah. Yeah. And we hope it doesn't get to that. Exactly. And that's my only reason involved. I honestly mm-hmm. didn't even care about all this, man. I was yeah. just like, forget all this. But then when it started, people started kind of hounding me down. Like, yeah. hey, 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 what's up with this? What's up with mm-hmm. Islamic scholarship nowadays? I was like, well, it's not Islamic scholarship. It's yeah. people who have been involved in Islamic mm-hmm. scholarship. And then it kind of became my business. You know, mm-hmm. I didn't want it to be my business because I was chill and I had mm-hmm. a nice yeah. peace of mind. You know, I, my sense of well-being was very nice. Mm-hmm. As far as us as a, as a, pla- as a media platform, that people look at us and people like, on one end, it was like us not knowing the facts. Should we talk about it? But at the same time, people were like, it, it's like you can't, not, everyone's talking about it. Yeah. So yeah. it's like people are like the Facebook posts are ironic. They're like, oh. we shouldn't talk about it, but here, by the way, here's my spiel. Yeah. yeah <laughs> you know right? I, mean? I saw that well, so many times. Like, all the time. Like, yeah. I was like, wait, you said you weren't going to talk about it. You just did. <laughs> right. Yeah. But but I, I, wanna, I don't think we talked about the thing of this thing called. Um, so I've been talking to some students of knowledge, like, you know, over the last couple of weeks. And the one thing that there's other, this seems to be discussion about is this concept of arbitration mm-hmm. in America, right? Like, where sometimes, and, and one Sheikh told me, like, a few days ago that. A lot of times you don't want – like the U.S. courts don't even want – they'd like you to arbitrate amongst yes. yourselves, yeah. Yeah. right, because it just makes their stuff easier mm-hmm. at the end of the day. And I feel like that's – and in this case, they're saying the arbitration was – there was arbitration that was necessary because mm-hmm. this is a concept of what they call kiana, mm-hmm. like distrust, right? Is that the right word, kiana? Kiana, yeah. Kiana and then like fisk or whatever. These are the terms mm-hmm. – I so, so they acknowledge it's not legally, but this is a way you can control – like unethical behavior is yeah. you have these arbitration. Yeah, and it's a lot of work for them. It's even just to initiate something and just for the for 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 the legal process to know that this is not something legal. Just to get to that process is, is mm-hmm. can be overwhelming for them just to initiate a process mm-hmm. to differentiate if it's legal or if it's not legal. Sure, they don't want that. Well, for know? now, for me now, like hearing this, like I've tried to I've tried to understand this over the past week or so. This yeah. concept of arbitration and this concept, I was like, now that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Because first I was like, well, there's no standard for arbitration. You hear. So, but then you're like, well, arbitration is going out recapping, and that's a common thing in America. Mm-hmm. Like, people do that. Yeah, especially like conflict resolution, divorce cases. Uh, absolutely. Right. So you don't have to spend all your time in court. Yeah, because then you're talking about legal. Because it, it's logical why you, like, why do people not go to authorities right away? Because once you involve lawyers, now mm-hmm. it's money involved. There's more layers of bureaucracy, et cetera. So if you can come to some kind of, like, you know, agreement in advance, this is how we're going to handle with all parties. Yeah. Now it sounds, yeah. it sounds like this case is like now some parties agreed, but then they're like, eh, "It's not going my way. I'm bailing." Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, <laughs> well, that that that's again, has that been? Did we really understand it that you know when when uh, Noman was going and doing uh, speeches with um, other masjids, and in your eyes, he was uh, failing to live up to the agreement. Did you come back to him and, and say, like, hey, what are you doing? Did Or did you just say, you broke the agreement, I'm going on Facebook? So uh, over the course of the summer, uh, there were a couple of moments uh, where, like, for example, uh, there was a, a post on the Baina website said to be from him. And and the question was, all right, is this breaking the agreement? So then I contacted him right away saying, okay, tell me that this is not from you. and And he said, no, this is not from me. And I said, then you should, rather than say it's from you, you should say it's from the desk of the Man Ali Khan. And, uh, and I think the Bayana people just removed the, the post entirely, right? Illustrating that they were uh, cooperating, right? And then in this last part, uh, uh, now about a month ago, um, uh, when, um, when it became clear that, um, that he is speaking again, um, that's the moment that I was saying that I was getting ready to contact you know, and and say the same thing that you know. Okay, give me the story of what this is, right? Because we did, you know, uh, we did give him permission uh, that if he has he has pre-recorded 
lectures, he's free to post those as long as they're not about gender or something, you know, gender marriage. And um, but then we got the letters, you know, from from the attorneys. You know. Okay. And so that so changed, the, that changed the, the, the dynamic, letters from the attorneys really just said, yeah. okay, um, this person no longer wants to continue with the arbitration process. Mm -hmm. And the, oh, I, yeah. and I remember seeing a Facebook post of yours that I think that kind of made me scratch my head. I'm like, oh, maybe. Um, Brother one was up or might be alluding to the whole uh, no man situation because we mm -hmm. we as we talked about earlier we knew a little bit about mm -hmm. what was going on um yeah and and uh I have to repeat the point that there uh there are quite a few people uh i mean I've been involved in multiple cases uh uh, uh I received accusations against many 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 different um speakers in our community, and I received substantiated uh, confirmed, uh, accusations or evidence against quite a few. Right. And, and so, yeah, there's, uh, uh, there's a lot of dirt that needs to be cleaned up. Um, I was going to ask you if you can comment on, cause in your post, you talk about you, you, you guys have been friends for many years Yeah, and I, I kind of figured that as well because I, I seen brothers post pictures and mm. Iona connections, yeah, right, et cetera. Yeah. And then he comes back and says, like, I don't know this dude. Yeah. <laughs> uh, can you comment on that, or is that something that you'd rather not at this point? No, I mean, because that's a public statement, that's fine. The uh, uh, I think, you know, he was probably surprised by the post, my post, even though it was inevitable. And um, and so to salvage whatever can be salvaged, uh, he, he made that comment. There's probably about a, a hundred or, or so people in the world who know that that was a, a blatant lie. Right. Um, uh, I got tempted to to remind him publicly about conversations he and I had, personal conversations um, about whatever matters, or even just to post some some photos. But that I decided would not gain anything in any capacity. Right. So all I did was just post, repost that paragraph. Um, um, meaning, my job is in terms of that step was done, and what I expected to be accomplished was accomplished, and and and. Uh, you know, I mean, from that point forward, whenever I talk to mutual friends, uh, the point that I made to all of uh, uh, our mutual friends that I've spoken with is to to try to be a lifeline for him because I don't know where he is right now psychologically. Meaning, another way to frame all this is that um, anytime there's there's a person who is accused and there's some amount of evidence, making it pretty clear that that there is some guilt. My hope in every case is that they just own up to to their behavior, and say. Well, he yeah. did kind of own up to it, didn't he? With his letter, um, he did say like I I did make some mistakes or, or whatever, in that letter. I think uh um not remotely close to to what the seriousness of the situation is. And that's yeah. I think what's kind of getting lost yeah. uh, it, with some of the vague language that came with your um, yeah. with your communication. Um, people don't really know what the gravity is, and yeah. I, when uh, when uh, some of the, some people who you know had feedback after Daniel's episode with us, mm -hmm. they were critical of you know some of the language that we used on that mm -hmm. episode, and I I told them like you're privy to information that mm -hmm. I have no idea yeah. where you're coming from. You're you're talking about something that I don't even know mm -hmm. because you're you're already involved in this case. So mm -hmm. so please elaborate and tell us what how grave the the situation was if mm -hmm. you can i mean i can't i can't get into that uh right now but i'll put it like this that uh no matter what wording was used uh a lot of people's imagination will go to the worst possible thing yeah. Yeah. right and inappropriate is almost the standard word that is used for for these types of accusations regardless of how serious or how light they are right uh even in hindsight i mean I mean, I was making du'a, I was making istikhara leading all the way up to the point of posting. And then during the posting, as I'm about to hit post, and since then, I've been constantly praying, like, you know, okay, uh, is this the right thing? You know, please forgive me if I've done something wrong. Uh, meaning I didn't lose any sleep over the hate because I was expecting that. Uh, but I've lost a lot of sleep over, you know, even before this month uh, over, okay, what is the right thing to do here? Um especially for my own akhirah. So the point is that uh, I don't think there could be anything that could have been posted that would not be uh, uh, read in every single wrong possible way. And I don't know what other wording there could be. And when we say seriousness of the matter, yeah. um, are we talking about seriousness 
it at the level of advantage that was taken over people. I mean, is that what we're referring yes. to seriousness? Because yeah. that, because if we say something, I mean, we, 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 Alhamdulillah, we said there was nothing as far as zina or yeah. nothing like that, you know, um, no major sexual misconduct, Alhamdulillah. So the seriousness here is that the individual has a certain type of spiritual power mm-hmm. over the individual, spiritual mm-hmm. authority, and that advantage was taken over those people. And it involved deceit. Okay, and it involved deceit. Okay. Yeah. And it sounds like what you're saying is if we, obviously we're not asking for everyone to see evidence. Yeah. There's no need to, right? But if you're saying that if people are speaking so strongly about it because if you saw the evidence, you're pretty much convinced anyone who saw the evidence objectively would say this is pretty jacked up. If if people were being objective. And so uh, we cannot expect uh, the, the crowd of lay Muslims to be objective, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, that's not fair to them. Right. Uh, because uh, uh, that, I mean, we're not all investigators. At most, people have seen a lot of episodes of CSI or something like that. And and I mean, as was the case in in this case, uh, the previous, uh, for lack of a better word, high profile case, lots and lots of people called me up, lots of my friends who who pretty much started doing their own investigation. Did you do this? And then what happened? Then what happened? And, you know, I'd have to stop the conversation saying, I mean, I appreciate your need uh, for your heart to be settled, uh, but the best you're going to be able to rely upon is any amount of trust you have in 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 my judgment. And if you have no trust in my judgment, that's that's also fine too. But the point is that for the 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 masses, um, no amount of evidence would would uh, uh, would be um, convincing for people who will not be convinced. Yeah, and I, as I'm hearing you talk, you know, yeah. it's really like I could hear the concern you have for no man is your friend. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's like when you've been friends with a guy for a long time and you're you know, it's it's not outing here. You're like trying to help him out. Mm -hmm. And you're like, this is you're you're, there's this concern that I'm really here and come across here and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Um, One thing I wanted to like touch upon is like, again, we and we alluded in the beginning, a lot of people have this perception that the two cases, Molana Salim and Noman, are the two things you're involved in. You've been involved a lot more, Mm -hmm. but that you are part of this greater liberal leftist agenda to sure. like undermine the authority of the ulama and to mm-hmm. undercut like in Noman's case people's connection to the Quran mm-hmm. and they cite examples that okay you were involved and in, you were like the facilitator of some LGBT or sure. or whatever can you like talk about some of this stuff yeah sure sure let's talk about the LGBT iftar first and then we can talk about <coughs> you know you know how i position myself islamically or how I try to position myself Islamically. Uh, right after the shootings in Orlando, uh, whatever that was, I think two summers ago, uh, we had some discussion uh, about what should we do, right? Uh, as we all know, we as Muslims were, were put under, under the microscope yet again uh, because, unfortunately, the shooter uh, uh, claimed to be, as far as we know, Muslim. Um, and then there's also the other issue of the LGBT uh, community. Uh, and I've, I've spoken in my, in my years of speaking to just about every single type of audience, including genocide survivors. And when I've spoken to LGBT audiences, they really look like an audience that was in the middle of a genocide. And what I mean by this is that these are people who've been told their, their whole lives that they're freaks, that God hates them, uh, and they're destined to hell. And the vast majority of them are far more afraid of, of being hit by spontaneous violence than, than I am. Okay. And so uh, we had discussions, a number of, of us, about having an iftar. And, and I invited, uh, I personally invited uh, quite a few of the leaders of the Chicago Muslim community. And then some others uh, invited some uh, Muslims who are part of the LGBT community, right? And my goal was one simple goal, and that was for people to hear stories. Nothing was being endorsed. Uh, I'm very public about the fact. You can, you can in fact, uh, there's a, a review I do of a movie for the Roger Ebert site. The movie is called A Sinner in Mecca, which is this sensationalist film about this, this Muslim gay guy who, who goes on Hajj. And, you know, he's constantly afraid of, of getting attacked or getting killed. And, and I, do a, a, I do a very critical review of that film. But in that, I also say that in whatever capacity of a practicing Muslim I am, I cannot, uh, I cannot endorse gay marriage, right? Uh, but we do have to uh, bring ourselves to see the humanity of everyone. And so in this iftar, the basic point was that I gave the floor to, to the people in the room 
to share their stories, to share their stories of struggles with faith, to share their stories of a fear of being assaulted, or to share their stories of being assaulted. And the Muslim leaders in the room uh, basically listened, and then we also had conversation, people would ask questions and such. Nothing uh, remotely was endorsed, and I mean, the host, um, she's also a friend of mine uh, with whom I, I have some confidence. She actually left to go pray Tarabi, right? Um, um, this was this was uh, iftar, and this was uh, one of the Ramadan nights. And uh, there were some things that were said that were very very difficult to to hear about people and their personal choices or people and the things that they experienced, right? Um, but the event itself was far less uh, controversial. I mean, I think for the people who attended, if you were um, there, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, because people made it out to be like. All the Muslims were, and I'm kind of exaggerating, but yeah. they were wearing the rainbow flags all over their clothing and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and holding the flags. Or rainbow flag hijabs at Tarawee. Yeah, yeah, no, and waving it around in support of yeah. LGBT. That's how people made it out yeah. to be, right? Yeah. And I'm glad you clarified that. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, and and the point is that, all right, uh, and when it comes to the topic of LGBT, uh, I, I align with uh, you know the, the, the mainstream Muslim opinions on, on all this. The point that I do emphasize, however, is that in terms of all of the people that I've met who place themselves in the LGBT spectrum, uh, I've met almost no one who chose to be gay, right? I've met almost, I met almost no one who chose to be lesbian. I even had a Muslim student, no, a student who was interested in Islam, who, who self-identified as lesbian, and she said very, very, uh, um, almost in pain, why would I choose this, right, if you knew what I have to go through, Right. And so in terms of uh, giving pastoral care to someone who's self-identifying as LGBT, then the question becomes, okay, what is the best thing that, that this person needs in terms of getting closer to Allah, right? Um, but a lot of people who are not familiar with community work, especially when you're really, really on the ground, and I'm not saying this out of any sort of nobility, you're addressing people according to where they're at and what their situation is. So let's change it from LGBT to, to something completely different, like a domestic violence case, and someone can't control their anger. Um, it's easy to tell that person, okay, you're not supposed to be angry, okay, but yeah. you have to give that person something that will help them. Yeah, they know they're not supposed to be angry. When they're in the time of anger, yeah. they know there's something wrong, but they yeah, mm -hmm. can't control Yeah, of course. Yeah. This, this, um, this LGBT iftar dinner, uh, coupled with your previous marriage to Samar Gokab, mm. who was seen by many as a uh, as a person who's leftist. Okay, mm -hmm. Let's just, I'll just leave it at that. And th that has kind of framed you as a person who is uh, liberal and mm -hmm. um, you know part of a liberal agenda. So if you could talk a little bit about the liberal yeah, and agenda. And the only reason why we're saying this is yeah. because. Um, the way it came off to uh, mm -hmm. people, you know, and, you know, it's not like I judge you or we judge you. Mm -hmm. We just. But again, people are still spinning truth. it that way, right? No, but it's, it's, it, it seems, it seems yeah. to some people like who are super conservative, mm -hmm. they have a certain way of looking at this whole issue. Yeah. Even when it started from the Malala Salim time. Mm -hmm. to, and then the people who are to completely not conservative, they see it in a completely different light. Mm -hmm. People who are liberals, like I've met people who are liberals. I'm friends with some liberals and mm -hmm. I don't mind, whatever. And they're like, they're like, yeah, this will teach them that, you know, liberal Islam is actually, this is how it's supposed to be mm -hmm. done. So we're going to eradicate them. And then now finally it's our turn. They've kind of labeled it as yeah. our turn. Yeah, I don't agree the, with that. Yeah, and the conservatives, they're like, you know, this is their way of, uh, exterminating us because now mm -hmm. obviously the the government it's in the interest of the government mm -hmm. to get rid of conservatives so they're helping that agenda they have a hand in this so now they can make the calls now and they're going to get rid of all of the conservative quote unquote people in the masjid or the mm -hmm. masjid that are, can be conservative and they're going to be policing us yeah right so there's there's these two things that are kind of talking mm -hmm. about the same thing but they're on opposite spectrums mm -hmm. right i mean I've, I've i'm involved in in quite a few different things in the community i have a history of involvement with cbe Right. There was a period of time where I used to support MLI. I no longer support it. Um, and then, yeah, in terms yeah. of my, my previous family history, people have made other assumptions. Yeah, I, I won't forgot get about into, the MLI thing. Yeah. Uh, and I won't get <laughs> too much into, into you know, the, my personal life, not so much for, for my sake, but for the sake of other parties. Um, yeah. But uh, that's all understandable. Um, and I'm not even remotely surprised. I mean, I know my community very, very well. And, um, and a lot of times uh, people who should know better um, kind of, um, you know, spew hate and such. And then the people who admire them, follow them will fall through and then things like this spread. Right. Uh, and so, uh, 
I don't know how to prove to someone that I'm not some stooge of the government or the Illuminati or what have you. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, I think the people who, who know me, I hope that they regard me as someone with, with integrity and some degree of seriousness uh, about not just my Islam, but the Islam of people in the community. You know, I hope that that's, uh, that's something that comes across. I think Inshallah. your position, so like I... I uh... You know, talking to some brothers who know you well or yeah. like similar to what Imam Suhaib is kind of like his whole niche right now, right? Okay. Um, you know, certainly there's people who are like, let's say you're a student at Darul Qasim. Yeah, which you uh, probably, I that's am. not your, that's not, you, you are? Yeah, or have been. Or, I hey, haven't been for over a year, but yeah, yeah. Yeah. So like, let's say you're a student at Darul Qasim. They're probably not going to go to, but they don't need you. That's not your like niche, yeah, right? They're, they're real scholars. Right. right but yeah. like for you, you, you're, you're dealing with this guy who maybe, let's say he's, He's gay. He just became Muslim. He's trying mm -hmm. to navigate that in Ramadan, mm -hmm. for example. I'm hinting. It's maybe I don't. Uh, someone told me there's a scenario where you guided someone through, and then he was talking about how spiritual he felt, and maybe that month he didn't really engage in some of that stuff, and you were like, kind of like hinting at maybe that's why. I don't mm -hmm. know. If that's yeah. I mean, so I mean, I'll, I'll give you. Let me give you a couple scenarios to think about. The first one, which is one I give to to students very frequently, this is a real case. Suppose you have someone who who self identifies as gay and is in a gay marriage, and then they're asking you, should they become Muslim, and they don't intend to end their gay marriage? How would you answer that question? Should they become Muslim? Yes. Obviously, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's the point, right? When you, it's, it's easy to think of things according to just black and white theoreticals, but when you're looking at a person and, and their lives, then things get much more complicated. Then you have to look at things like priorities and such and, and higher purposes uh, yeah. um, 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 for what is specific to that person. Uh, I'll give you a different case. Um, uh, this is also real. Of, of a student who, who uh, was a relatively new Muslim, and this person would refuse to believe that anything that is haram is haram whether we're talking about drinking, whether they're talking about physical intimacy, whether they're talking about language, because in his outlook, you should discover the person you are without anyone uh, stopping you, right? That's, that's how, yet he was Muslim, right? Yeah. And, and, you know, I asked him, what do you, what do you like about Islam? He likes to, to read the Quran. He likes to pray, but he doesn't feel like you have to. And, and he, and I asked him, you know, when was the last time you were happy? Okay. And, he had trouble with this uh, because I could tell he was unhappy, and I'll tell you why in a second. Uh, but his favorite time of the year is Ramadan. And why? Because uh, the outlook he's taking is whether or not he realizes it is that your nafs is right all the time. And your nafs has one voice, feed me, feed me, feed me. And yeah. so anything, any appetite he had, he would feed himself, but that by definition is going to be unhappiness. That if you're always trying to feed yourself, you will have that short moment of satisfaction and then you're going to be back in unhappiness. But why did he love Ramadan? Because in Ramadan, you are not feeding your nafs. You are completely putting on hold everything. And he would then become happy, right? And Impressive. and he was interesting. His His life, you know, from a traditional perspective was literally the reverse. I mean, he would be up all night, sleep all day, things like that. I mean, it was literally the inverse, but he loved Ramadan because, I mean, it's logical. You are holding your nafs back mm -hmm. and you're allowing yourself then to be happy. Yeah. And again, that's a different case, right? That's, yeah. And so each of these cases has to be handled on a case-by-case -case basis. And just to clarify for the listeners, because we yeah. just went over that really quick, yeah. is we said that if you have somebody who's, who's who self-identifies as gay and they're yeah. in a gay marriage and they say they want to become Muslim but the only thing is holding them back is their gay marriage, yeah. and we said, yes, of course you want them to become Muslim. Yeah. So the reason why this is an important question is because we have to be able to take our emotions and whatever we think about homosexuality, push it to the side and see how can this person be saved in the akhirah. Mm -hmm. Is it possible that someone can be Muslim and be gay? That's the first thing. Afterwards, you can deal with that later or help the person as much as you can. But at the end, the only thing that can save that person is it's better that that person mm -hmm. is gay and is in a gay marriage, mm -hmm. whatever that case may be, even though Islam doesn't allow that. Mm -hmm. is, but it's like many, we have to see it as it's just another haram, right? Mm -hmm. Some people are total alcoholics. If somebody says that, you know, I'm, 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 I'm an alcoholic, I can't stop drinking, so I'm not going to become Muslim. Mm -hmm. Say, no, you become Muslim. If you believe it, do it right now mm -hmm. so you can't waste another minute. At least you'll be an alcoholic and be a Muslim. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's all, so that, that's how we see this. We can't see this as 
homosexuality is is just uh, a completely different haram because some people have the idea that you can't be Muslim and gay at the same time. Mm-hmm. No, it's discouraged to be gay. We're just making that very clear. You can't. You can't. Islam or discouraged Allah- to act upon it. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. The, the, and just to be fair, the other side who's very upset with these LGBT interactions or, or engagements, I should say. Um, they're kind of upset as well at the normalization of sin that, you know, there's blogs opening up, at, mm. uh, talking about sin and making it acceptable. And mm. we even had, we had um, Nura Mazvani on our mm. show, who was the author of uh, Salam yeah. Love. Yeah. And we got a lot of blowback uh, about, sure. you know, having her on the mm. show because she, her stories, um, had homosexual stories in her books mm-hmm. and um the i i can't argue that i feel like there is a case to be made for you know uh, people trying to make sin normal and mm-hmm. that, that that there should be some shame about that and i could understand um someone uh trying to disclose a sin to explain why people should not, shouldn't go down that route like mm. if i had a period of alcoholism in my life and mm. i talked about that to dis, to stop younger people from mm-hmm. going down that route and trying to yeah. you know i explained the sin of that i had just to prevent the community yeah. from falling into that yeah, sure. that's a different thing than the acceptance but, of that sin but you people know? believe that if you're talking about it, see this is the problem I, why i think it's a double edged sword mm. you know you guys chime in on this too mm. The dilemma here is that if you talk about it, then you're publicizing it. That's mm-hmm. what people believe. Mm-hmm. But now, guess what? It's open. It's 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 everywhere now. There's nothing you could do about it. So the only thing we could do now is you're not you're just gonna probably end up looking like a fool if you're gonna continue continuously hide it and say there's no such thing as gay Muslims mm-hmm. or there's no such thing as homosexual. I mean, mm-hmm. that, that the only way you can deal with this now is actually to take care and try to help and remedy this issue with Muslims Mm -hmm. and let them know that, listen, if you have homosexual thoughts and tendencies, you still haven't committed haram. But at an Islamic level, right? And people think that this is, you know, politically incorrect. But at an Islamic level, that just means that you need to try to get some counseling or get some therapy or get some clinical work because that is a test. Some people have a test of spending money. Now, some people have a test that Allah is testing this person and everything happens with the permission of Allah, they're having homosexual thoughts and tendencies, their test is not to act upon it in this dunya. Yeah. But, you understand what I'm saying? I mean, right now, the the left is stopping the conversation that even therapy, like, you're not even allowed no, to I understand. talk about therapy. They say or, that you are saying this, you, oh, you, I, I have a clinical you know? problem. Mm-hmm. No, no, I'm saying what I believe in religiously because I have the freedom to believe whatever I want, right, and say whatever I want, but I have to say it respectfully. Yeah. But I believe, based on my religion, which I believe is not from any human being, so I'm not saying this. If you have an issue, you have to deal with the creator of the heavens and the mm-hmm. universe. But, I mean, that's what's putting my mindset when I'm saying that to them. But to say that I'm not trying to be politically incorrect, this is what I'm saying. This is what the doctrine says. Mm-hmm. This is what the sacred text says. Does that mean that I'm going to treat you unjustly? No, I'm not going to treat you unjustly. You know, if somebody's right. an alcoholic and comes to me for help, I'm going to treat him unjustly. No, I have to make sure to act like he doesn't even have a problem mm-hmm. yeah. if I want to deal with him. Mm-hmm. I'm not even called. I'm not even going to use that word problem in the conversation. I'm going to refer to it as an issue. Yeah. Or maybe dilemma, because mm-hmm. as soon as I tell him it's a problem, he might shut his mind off, right? So you can't make them feel that way. But the the thing is that it, it's it, it is a tough situation because I even I work in an Islamic school too, and when I say to people that you know it's we see it as a clinical issue as believers, mm-hmm. and we have to try to deal with it, and let's say they never overcome it, that's a possibility too. But does that mean that they're not a Muslim? Mm-hmm. No. Does that mean that La ilaha Muhammad is the only, the only thing that's going to save them? Of course, that's the only mm-hmm. thing that can save anybody. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, so, so I mean, w- one of the points that, that I appreciate that you made was, especially right at the beginning, that right, people think that, all right, if you're talking about it, that you're publicizing something. And yeah. now you're talking about it to draw attention to, to, to We have a dilemma, yeah. Issue. Yeah, and... And the, the, the part of the challenge with, with uh, LGBT uh, self-identifying Muslims is, is that uh, they're actually getting uh, ostracized or kicked out by both communities, right? So they're being shunned by the Muslim community, and they're also being shunned by the LGBT community because there's a lot of hatred of religion in those communities because it's religion that's oppressed us and such and such and such. And so now you have, uh, you have this population of people that have no home. Right. And uh, very often they've already been kicked out of their houses. Right. And and you'll find, a, 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 for lack of a better uh, term, a whole spectrum of people in terms of levels 
of, for lack of a better term, LGBTness, and 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 the the therapy. I mean, uh, historically, this was this was addressed as as a sickness, but I never came across anything that was a type of cure that didn't seem like torture, right? Yeah. Um, and I haven't looked enough in the in our books um, for for anything like uh, a realistic cure uh, for for those who would be seeking cure. Uh, the other point I want us to think about is that um, one place where this is a bit different than something like alcoholism, we're talking about someone's existential identity, right? Their whole being. That if you've been, like, uh, I'll put it like this. So I have a student, another student, who who uh, who discovers, and I'm using this word intentionally, that, that he's gay when he's about 14, and he shuts it down completely. And he gets married to to a woman. And it's more or less a happy marriage, but then he reaches a point where he just decides he can't do this anymore, and he he wants to leave her and and be with a man. And I asked him, "What is it like for you when you're with your wife in terms of intimacy?" And he says to me, "The same thing it would be like for you if you were with a man. He's physically repulsed by his wife." Okay. And and so think about uh, uh, for for everyone who's listening, you know, for whom this might be a very difficult conversation. Uh, it's easy to write off such a person and say, okay, you're a sinner, you're a sinner, you're a sinner, or you just need to pray more. No, this is something that somebody's battling with. And he was the only case of all the different students that I've had where I could say to him, this is the test that Allah Ta'ala has given you. Because he, I knew, had a level of understanding of deen where he can understand this is his test. In my experience, most uh, most people, regardless of what the issue is, uh, are not even at that level where they can understand that this is my test. Right, yeah. and and therapy is often very uh, uh, very necessary, especially because, in my experience, the vast majority of people who are in that spectrum uh, are suicidal, right? For 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 many many reasons, yeah. and again, uh, uh, people yeah, are I mean, complex. Uh, we we have to talk about that just because I mean it, it kind of talks about the situation that we're in, yeah. and that when you you know have an lgbt engagement that mm-hmm. now you're you're on a show and you have to explain for about 20 minutes or so mm-hmm. what uh why you did that and mm-hmm. you know i mean it, it's something new to the community as well and i think that it deserves its its time that we 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 mm-hmm. continue to have these discussions about sure. it and oh. you mentioned something sorry I, it's just my curiosity right. it, it's like in sheer curiosity you mentioned something that uh the the people that may be gay uh the 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 Muslim community may be shunning them, and LGBT community may be shunning them because yeah. they're Muslim yeah. or because they're people of religion. Yeah. A lot of people have this understanding, and I don't know. I'm just yeah. saying. I hear people say this that um, LGBT community is actually the most supportive of Muslims. Very much so. Right. Very, very, I mean, whether they're the most or not, they're definitely very frequently. I mean, think of LGBT as a whole, whole different, uh, many, many communities. Yes. And you'll find many of them who are very much supportive of Muslim causes. But then there's some amongst them that are complete as anti-religion. Then. Yeah, absolutely. Like, like naturally, like any other movement. Yeah, yeah, I mean, these are conversations. I mean, I have friends who, who self-identify as LGBT who are Catholic who will say exactly the same thing. That, uh, you know, the dilemma they face is that, okay, they're, they're practicing Catholics. But the people in the LGBT communities tell them, "How can you possibly be Catholic?" Right? Mm. They're, I mean, look at the way they treat us. Okay. Right? And then in you know in their Catholic circles, they're also being they're also being um, shunned or if not removed entirely. Thank you for clarification, right. man. Omar, how often like so when you explain your position, like okay, well, you know, this is what Islam teaches about LGBT. Mm-hmm. Like only if you act on it, etc., and use that kind of language that Sheikh Omar was yeah, talking about. Yeah, I actually about. almost never use that language, but oh. I'm sorry, continue. Um, but have you? How often are you? St- are, are are you still accused of being uh, homophobic? Um, that's in that a good sense? question. Uh, I don't know. No, I mean, do people just say that's ho- like what your position is? It's still homophobic because you're not 110 percent on board with what we're trying to do. I mean, it's possible that people may may feel that way. No one has said that to me. More often than not, I think people appreciate that I'm uh, number one addressing these issues as complex issues, not as a way to avoid them, but as a way to really engage in them. And and number two, I'm emphasizing the humanity of uh, and struggles of every single person. And and um, and then I'm saying that yeah, in terms of my faith tradition, I don't know a way around you know X Y Z. Sure, sure. Um, I, I want to segue. You talked, you touched upon MLI and CVE and yeah. how you're um, 
you changed your position on MLI, but it sounds like you, so you you right now you are still because like we had a guest on Ahmed Sheikh talking about CVE. Yeah, he's not a fan of CVE. Yeah. yeah. What, what's what do you? Uh, I assume you. It sounds like you are pro CVE at this point. I mean, I'm not. I'm neither pro nor anti. Right? Okay. I'm just saying that uh, CVE is a thing, and and uh, there are certain aspects of it that uh, I feel are either okay or better than that important for me to be involved with so i'll put it like this like there have been multiple cases where people have asked me to talk to specific young people who've already been arrested uh you know on the usual um uh, accusations like conspiracy to support isis or something like that or conspiracy to provide material support meaning to the point that like you know attorneys have contacted me saying okay we have this client who's asking to talk to uh, a muslim client who's in jail um, who's asking to talk to someone uh, about Islam, can you go? And you know, I'll go drive down. You know, like in one case, for some reason, a lot of these guys are in Kankakee, so a couple a couple hours south. And, <laughs> and yeah, and I'll go and, and sit in the prison, you know, uh, talking, to, talking to some of these people who are sitting in jail. Um, and so, so at one level, I'm already involved whether I'm doing it through the government or not. Uh, at another level, this is especially of, of concern for me because you might be familiar with the case of Samir Khan, Samir Khan uh, was a kid that I knew since he was a little kid, and um, he went through some, some some difficulties and then started going through this transformation where he was listening to the lectures of Anwar al-Awlaki. And then I watched him transform into a really, really angry young man. And and we can talk more about it in detail if you want, but to make a long story short, his father lets him go overseas to study Arabic, and then in the process, he connects personally with Imam Anwar al-Awlaki. I don't know if Imam is the right word here, but... Um, and then one day I woke up and they were both killed in a drone strike, right? Wow. And so, so at a personal level, this is this is uh, something of serious concern for me. Now, in terms of of the government work, I've never received a government paycheck, but I've been asked, you know, by by uh, federal agencies to come and give presentations uh, about how I approach things, and my approach is very much focused on on Islamic knowledge and especially traditional Islamic knowledge. Like they, uh, many want to uh, promote this, this purely, purely peaceful, pacifist outlook on Islam. And I tell them that doesn't work. You have to be honest about what jihad is in our tradition. And, and you might find that frightening, but a lot of the guys who get, who get interested in, in ISIS types groups, they're being fed this notion that, that Muslim leaders and Muslim scholars are all a bunch of apologists. And they're afraid to talk about these things. And, and so I tell federal agents, okay, no, we have to speak from within the Islamic tradition about what the Islamic tradition, what the stances are on all these things. That in itself will diffuse a lot. And then further, I also focus very much on just the idea of compassion. Me as big brother to, to, to younger brother, in some cases younger sister, talking to them. Uh, my work has been through the Council of Islamic Organizations primarily. But like I said, in, in terms of some of the presentations I've given, federal agents asked me to give presentations to their people. And I mean, the last one I gave was last January. And they asked me, do you feel like we're doing the right thing? And, and I said, you know, as soon as the inauguration happens, all bets are off. Right. And so uh, I'll be talking to some more people related to CVE type work. I mean, now it's called counterterrorism, um, uh, probably in the next few days. And I'm evaluating, is this something that I feel is beneficial? Is this something that I feel is uh, a useful use of my time? Um, uh, I am as skeptical about about government as anybody else is. Um, and what government is, is basically, I mean, it's not the, again, it's not the Illuminati, this secret government that has this, this, this massive agenda against Muslims. Um, but, um, there are some cases where, uh, where government efforts will align with what we're seeking. And there's some cases where they will, they will completely contradict, uh, what we're seeking. Yeah. Yeah. But so CVE. Yeah, have yeah. you, uh, have you been a recipient of CVE funds? No. Okay. No. I just wanted to make that clear. Uh, the Council of Islamic Organization received funds through the Department of Homeland Security, and through that, I did projects with the Council of Islamic Organizations. Yeah, yeah, and you know, a lot of we should also know that the uh, uh, the government is basically a, a, a mega organization, mega yeah. corporation, and yes. every corporation has its interests. Uh -huh. Anything that may hinder its interests in mm -hmm. any way, it has to deal with it in a certain way. Yeah. Right, and I'm glad you brought that up. Many, many people think that the government is just there to its sole purpose and existence is to, you know, uh, go against Islam and Muslims, mm -hmm. and that that's not the case. We have to be honest with ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's just like any other, but it's the biggest of corporations, mm -hmm. and anything that affects 
what it's trying to set out, it has to deal with it. Mm-hmm. Whether that's where we, are, I'm not saying I agree with everything yeah. that happens, but I'm saying we have to look at something for its reality. Mm-hmm. To say that the government's sole purpose and its existence is to get rid of Islam and Muslims is just not true. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, I think just uh, nobody has that type of time anyway. I mean, yeah. most of these employees have to keep their jobs. Of course, some of these people have found a niche in 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 counterterrorism work, and uh, I'll even put it like this. Okay, so. Um, uh, I, uh, there's, uh, I got contacted by, by a TV producer who wanted, uh, who wants to do a show about de-radicalization. And I mean, without getting into too much details about, about the show, it's a long time, in, uh, before it'll be really developed. And I said to him, you know, so he asked me to, to perhaps be part of the show. And I said to him, okay, nobody's coming to me. No young people are coming to me anymore. Right. Uh, as it is, the number of people who are involved in CV. Oh, this is something I, sh- I should make. Literally every single meeting that I've ever been in with federal agents, I start and I'm giving a presentation. I start off by saying the Muslim, this problem of Muslim terrorism is completely overplayed compared to white supremacy. And if you look at my SoundCloud, you, I can even refer you to a wow. specific lecture when I'm saying that, right? And none of them like to hear that. And I tell them because... This is involving Muslims. Even if one person gets involved, there's bloodshed involved. You know, I have I have a vested interest in this, uh, but I'm very very blunt about these things. Thank you, man. That's you know? awesome. That's and, awesome. And and so, uh, but I also say that okay, uh, every single person I've talked to in the Muslim community, no matter what level they're at, will all say have all said that okay, in terms of like concerns in the Muslim community, this is pretty much at the bottom uh, compared to. You know, kids uh, who are struggling with faith, kids who who are who are suffering from from uh, abuse, or or drugs or gangs or what have you. That that you know, the worry about kids going to join ISIS is literally at the bottom of the list. And that's true. And yeah. it's even now, at least in terms of people coming to me, it's even lower than it was two years ago. You know, there was a there was a period of time where a lot of people were asking me, you know, what about this? What about that? And no one's asking me anymore. And yeah. so. Um, and let's also also be fair. There are definitely other people who are connected to government who have vested interests, you know, in uh, in ruining Muslims, in declaring war on Muslims, uh, etc. They're also part of this, yeah. and some of those people are Muslims, yeah. right? Yeah. Dang. Um, and then uh, MLI, you switch. Can you talk a little yeah. bit like why you change your position? Because yeah. some people have the perception that you were anti MLI. Yeah. Then you got married. Yeah. Then you went pro MLI for like a year, and you were like a, a lot of people say like when Omar was married for that whatever how long? Yeah, then, then Omar lost his mind or something. Yeah, yeah like every yeah. like that we didn't know like he transformed into something someone totally different. Now he's yeah. back to the Omar that we know, <laughs> the, the Omar we know and love. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so in, sorry, I was meant to look that up. Maybe that happened. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, uh, at first, I didn't know much about what MLI was. Um, you know, my first introduction uh, came from from Rabia's uh, article, uh, which was an infamous article, uh, both because of the original headline. And speaking as someone who often writes in the press, I can I can confirm that you usually don't get to pick your your headline, right? I mean, if you look at all the uh, the essays that I wrote for for Ebert, uh, the vast majority of headlines he actually picked himself. Right, even though I gave a different headline, but yeah, there was content uh, contents in that article that that uh, that were problematic, um, and and so that was my introduction to it, and I didn't really think much about it, um, and then I began to find out some people who are part of MLI, and I thought to myself, okay, well these are not dumb people, and as I got to know Rabia, it became clear to me that she's not dumb herself, right, and it's easy to write off everyone as someone who is self promoting, but as someone who's also get accused of that. Uh, I try not to do that. And then, uh, yeah, so then I began to know people personally who are going on, on, on MLI and I liked the concept quite a bit and the concept being that it's engagement, right? Uh, that in general, you'll find me very frequently supporting like this, uh, the, the LGBTQ iftar, right? It was conversation. Uh, the the there are a couple fundamental problems with with MLI as it's being run. Number one, okay, these are not Muslim leaders in this Muslim leader initiative, right? And I'm speaking as someone who is more or less a Muslim leader. That out of all the different cohorts, uh, I don't know how many people have gone now. Maybe more than sixty people, maybe more than eighty or hundred people. Uh, it's not an exaggeration to say maybe three of them are actually leaders in their various communities. How would you define a leader? I mean, uh, why would you define yourself as a leader? Okay, so I, I'm saying I'm more or less a leader, but I'm saying someone who's like an imam of a masjid, someone who's a president of a masjid, someone who is a political leader who's Muslim. There's a couple of those who've gone, right? Most everyone else is someone who does not have, uh, who might have influence, um, but uh, 
does not uh, have anything beyond that. Leadership positions, you know? Yeah. You know. Yeah. And I'm saying I'm more or less uh, a leader, not in any official capacity, but because I'm often consulted by the leadership of Chicago, you know, for, for, for this issue or that issue. Um, and that is not the case for almost the entirety of the people who go on MLI, right? Second issue is that, okay, you can't do this and bypass the Palestinians, Right. That's I mean, that should be the most obvious part of it. Uh, this could in this could totally be some scam, um, you know, by by this uh, Zionist organization to to uh, further propagate whatever. Yeah, it's possible. But in terms of 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 uh, if they wanted to get informants, uh, that's easy to do. This is part of the reason why I was thinking, OK, these Muslims who are going are, are smart people. But. By and large, the Palestinians uh, are completely ignored. I mean, there's one Palestinian who went on a previous on this a very recent cohort who was who was chosen because he's Palestinian, right? Because now somehow it gives legitimacy, you know, supposedly. And and so so there's that problem. So it's a Muslim leadership initiative with no Muslim leaders, uh, with almost zero Palestinians. And then because I was privy to the conversations of the people who are who are uh, involved in MLI, what I kept hearing from them was nothing but attacks and hatred both for the Muslim community and attacks and hatred against Palestinians also. Like actual words in these emails were, I, this is why I wish lanat on the Muslim community. That's the language that's being used by these people, right? Hmm. These are people who should not be trusted. So, and then to make this point even further, so uh, uh, a couple things have also happened. Two of the most central people in MLI are two married people who are having an affair with each other. And the head of MLI, I've informed that person and he buried it. Okay. This is this is just rotten to the core, and then if that's not enough, I've been part of a of a, a quiet conversation with some Muslim leaders and some Jewish leaders to to work on on projects here in Chicago, and some MLI people got pulled into uh, got pulled into that not by us, and then they pulled in more of the MLI people, and they literally petitioned to have me removed, and one of these people even filed complaints against me um, uh, uh, at Loyola, right, and and I'm saying these people. Uh, uh, are not to be trusted. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. Anything else for guys on a roller coaster? Yeah. <laughs> what a roller coaster. Yeah, someone yeah. someone told me like uh, in one of the previous cases, I, I think I might have already mentioned this that, you know, I always trouble always seems to find me. Yeah, that I was going to say that you stole the words out of my mouth. I'm like yeah. It's, it must be interesting part, being part of a, your family unit, like a dad <laughs> yeah. at it again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, um, what, uh, like when you put your head on the pillow to go to sleep, uh, how 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 many hours is it take you to go to sleep? Yeah, it's one of, <laughs> yeah. It's I mean, and again, this is not me sounding pious. Uh, uh, it's you don't sleep, you pray to Hajj. That's what you're gonna say. <laughs> I, I I would like to say <laughs> I'm that. I'm joking. You know, but I'm joking. It's, I'm joking. It's you know just fear of you know what have I done? You know, yeah, I see. You what know, what are the choices that I'm making? Don't make everything yeah. easy. I mean, I mean for all. I of mean, that. just yeah. even with any any one who has any kind of uh, a platform or people are listening to him. I know us the the debates that we have. You know, you know, bringing on people that might. You know, the the community might look at and say, oh, you know, Mad Mamluks are sending a different kind of message. They, these are like difficult decisions we make yeah. and we, we live with mm. them. And these are things that, you know, they, we don't sleep easy at night. Uh-huh. And know, we have to clarify it. to people, too. It's giving somebody, you know, to be fair, you don't always have to agree with somebody to give sure. them a platform. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To give somebody a platform is just having, like you said, conversation, mm-hmm. right? Conversation is very, very important. And you learn a lot in the process, too, man. And, you know, but, but, just because you disagree with somebody on something, it doesn't mean you're not going to learn something else from them. You know what I'm saying? Sheikh Hamer, you remember our discussions three, four years ago. We would do so much armchair quarterbacking, like yep. look at who's doing mm-hmm. what. Yep. And we would like, you know. Yep. sling dirt at people left and right and it would be mainly me i'm not you're a nice guy I mean, <laughs> yeah, okay. right. uh, so i'll just i'd agree clear. with that assessment <laughs> so uh, I, i'm just very like polite with people no, no. I'm, uh, I'm, but, I'm mean you guys are all polite i'm mean sure. you know yeah. but well, i'll, yeah. I'll yeah. Well, i know what to mean. say i but, mean they're probably not mean but yeah. <laughs> right yeah, yeah, we but, were talking but, offline though I, I think this conversation is important because you know, I think people on the surface wouldn't look at Mad Mum Luke's and Omar Muzaffar as being on the same page. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, like, because we, like, I know you personally, right? 
um, I could say probably fairly that if I didn't know you personally, I'd probably hate your guts. Yeah, probably. <laughs> you know, like there just you go being no up front. Yeah, I told you, just you know, it's like, it's like, it's like, like I'm just being up front, but yeah. because I know who you are as a person, so he doesn't hate my guts. He hates everything about my being. Right. Me. You know what I mean? He says right, but Sorry. Like, again, filter. Yeah, exactly. Sorry. You know, but it, but it, but it, but it, I think that's the uh, the concept of having this kind of conversation. Um, you know, as you and you alluded to this in the past, you're not someone you consider yourself a scholar. But uh, like I mean, people consider me, but I'm not anywhere close. Uh, and I can say that especially because we have a real sheikh here. Yeah. Able to show, I mean, how, like, can you talk a little bit about your own background, like being in Chicago? Have you you studied Islam in the academic sphere more or less? Is that like what you'd say, or a little bit of everything? Okay. I mean, so uh, I was born at a very young age, zero. <laughs> Uh, sorry. It's, a, it's a dad joke that I've been telling for about 30 years now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you guys walk right into it, mashallah. So, uh, yeah, I grew up in, in the Chicagoland uh, community primarily. Uh, my family is very actively involved in the Frankfurt Masjid. And uh, I mean, I was born in Karachi. We came here when I was about two years old. And and so uh, went through the whole uh, Sunday school program. It's interesting because we were down in Frankfurt where – Property value is a little bit different than it is here, mashallah, in the western suburbs and up north. And so there are a lot of people who are um, who are at, very active in the Muslim community or were college professors that were our Sunday school teachers, right? So, you know, one of my long, long time teachers and the father of, of some of my closest friends, you know, Afzal Ferdowsi, he was, he was a Muslim chaplain at Stateville Prison, right? And, I mean, this is long before anybody knew what a chaplain even was, long before I had any thought that I'd ever be a, a, a chaplain. And, and so... Uh, I was blessed with some really, really good teachers, right? Um, uh, and then, and you know, I mean, you might be familiar with Jafar Qadri. He was a teacher for a lot of people throughout the community. Yeah. Uh, he he was one of our teachers every every week. And and uh, as I was getting older, one of the dilemmas I was facing was that people could not answer my questions about Dean, about life, and such. And and I think all of us just you know we have a consciousness of being in some sort of exile. Um, Especially, you know, we're multiple levels of of being minorities, you know, being Muslim, being, I mean, all of us at this table are South Asian uh, and whatever else. And so, you know, so I was also like the square peg that never really fit in anywhere. And so I would always just be lost in my own thoughts, you know, with wrestling with big and small questions about life and how life works. Um, and somewhere in there, someone had recommended for me to read the autobiography of Malcolm X and as is the case that I think you guys will all agree with, once you go through that book, you know, you're know you not the same person. But one of the things that that book provided for me is that I used to, I used to stay up at night because I couldn't understand, like, you know, is life just, okay, you, get, you, you go to school, uh, you get a job, you get married, you raise them, uh, you raise kids to have them go to school, uh, get married, get, have jobs, and then they raise kids. And then is that all? There has to be more to life than that. And so what Malcolm X allowed was uh, just the understanding that, no, there's much, much more to life. And there are things that are very, very serious in life um, that, that people cannot just walk past. And, and so that allowed me uh, not as much to have a social consciousness because the music and the art at the time was very much focused on social consciousness. This is, this is the late 80s and, and early 90s. And then um, um, I would also have uh, uh, individual teachers uh, most of it was Quran teachers, and then I had joined Tanzima Islami, you know, which is head by by Israr Ahmad, and that was all part of the the Khilafah movement, um, and I was a very very hardcore member of that uh, for 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 quite some time, and and so a lot of study took place in 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 that organization, and that's actually how I got to know Noman, uh, as well as some other people um, who who are prominent in, in in the Muslim community now. And mashallah for them all, and may Allah tell accept all of our efforts. And um, and so my degree is in filmmaking, and my first job, or while I was in film school, uh, this documentary, so-called documentary, came out on PBS called Jihad in America by Stephen Emerson. Stephen Emerson mm -hmm. is one of those old uh, Islamophobes. And I originally went into to, to film school for cinematography just because I loved, you know, beautiful, beautiful photos and such. And I realized uh, because of that documentary that I better study every aspect of, of the filmmaking process. And I began to really develop an appreciation for writing. And you could also say that that forced me to also get even more serious uh, uh, about Dean. Just before I had started film school, uh, I was sitting on the set of a movie, uh, an Oliver Stone movie, as an extra and I decided that I had to read the Quran cover to cover in translation. 
which I did just before starting film school. And then, you know, I would form an MSA at, at, at the college, Columbia College, uh, Chicago. And I thought it was normal that most of our MSA was non-Muslim, right? That's how I just thought all MSAs were. Our Juma was mostly non-Muslim. And, and still I'm facing this dilemma of, of these questions. Wait, about, sorry to cut you off. What do you mean they're mainly non-Muslim? Like, so we'd, so we'd have, let's say, 15 people at Juma, which three are Muslim, four are Muslim. And everyone else would be praying Juma with you? They're yeah. non-Muslim? Yeah. Wow, I never heard of that. Uh, I really thought that was normal. But now, keep in mind, this is an art school. So I discovered by accident what many of the people would do after Juma because I was walking down a hallway and I noticed a particular smell that was very familiar. It was a smell of marijuana not familiar because of me but just because i'm at an art school of and course. i opened this door and it's all the guys from juma smoking in, in this <laughs> in this classroom i thought all right so they just you know got high in the spirit one way and then now they're getting high are these home. like the like the non-muslim sufis you hear about um Those no, kind they, of types? They, no these guys didn't identify as anything right they but just they, showed the juma they would they would come to all That's of our like MSA meetings seeking spirituality yeah. some of them would 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 later become muslim you know um and also, and I'm just going to make this point uh, to address, you know, uh, concerns about you know, me and self-promotion. Uh, the first year I was there, um, uh, I put signs up on every single bulletin board of every single building of, of, the, of the school. And for our first me- – and then for – we had like student activities day, like 50 people signed up. In our first meeting, about 20 people showed up. Okay? Second meeting, zero people showed up. Third meeting, zero people showed up, right? And so then I gave up. The second year that I was there, I decided, I'm having this conversation with Allah Ta'ala saying, okay, I'm just going to try again. I'm going to put one sign on one wall okay, for a meeting that was a Tuesday, and that meeting would be Friday. And then like four or five people showed up, of which one person became Muslim you know, at some point in the year, who later brought in about five other people, you know, mashallah. And so my point is that uh, a lot of times people get caught up in the numbers and, you know, like you said, I think before our conversation, you don't know where the barakah is going to come from. Yeah. And so every single soul is, is of value. And, and that was a big lesson for me. But anyway, back to, back to my Islamic journey. I worked for the Council of Islamic Organizations of Greater Chicago, producing a low-budget TV show. That was their first full-time employee. Um, that wasn't enough to, put bills on the, uh, to pay bills. And so eventually I just went into customer service. And meanwhile, I'm also studying privately uh, with, with others, and I'm also you know, gaining through, through the work of Tanzim Islami. And again, most of my study is, or most of what I'm being taught is Quran. And that's something I like about Tanzim Islami. They focus a lot on the Quran. It's very, very much on yeah, Quran. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Dr. Isra's post, may Allah's, uh, his approach, may Allah mm-hmm. have mercy upon him, was, you know, don't mess with the tradition. Yeah. Right? The tradition has, has a thousand years behind it. Don't don't mess and try to throw it out. But the first step is, is return to the Quran. Yes. Yeah. That's what I loved about him. Yes. Alhamdulillah. And, and um, uh, then I went to customer service, working for a healthcare company, listening to people yell at me all day long because their bills weren't getting paid. <laughs> oh, and then this is the IT boom. Then I went into IT. And, and to, you know, I did something, I don't know if it was the best move. Like in my interview, this is literally at the height of the IT boom. I realized that they're just, you know, desperate to hire me. So I told them, and this was downtown. So I told them for all of my prayers, I want to go to the mosque. They're like, okay. Right. It also meant I would arrive at work super early and leave super late. But think about it in the wintertime, I'm going for Dhoher, for Asr, for Maghrib, walking there, coming back. Um, uh, The unintended result of that was that I also became more and more involved with the downtown Islamic Center. Um, I already had relations with them because I used to work for the council, but um, that was also good because it it wind up making some people who were elders to also be mentor figures. And then while I was in IT, then I started looking at going back into into uh, academics. And so I got, a, I got an evening master's. Um, um, it's basically in liberal arts. So University of Chicago has this program that's designed for people who are like 60 years old who want to enrich themselves, where you study all the dead white guys, right? Socrates, <laughs> Shakespeare, Freud, everybody. It's a really amazing program that I'd recommend it for everybody. And Is it the Graham School? Yeah, the Graham School. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and you, you know the Graham School. Marshall. I've heard, I've looked into it. Okay, <laughs> nice. Uh, it's a fantastic program. It was especially fantastic is here I am like this kid in his 20s and everybody else is about 60 years old and I'm getting their insights from, wow. from the readings and the conversations. And I decided to make my thesis on the Quran, looking at the Quran through uh, a, a Western liberal arts lens. That was, a, that was a, a beneficial exercise. And then from there, as I'm finishing that up, then I started a PhD in Islamic studies. Uh, which I worked on for quite some time. That has been on hold now for for over ten years. That hopefully I can I can get back to. 
And then I also, st- I mean, periodic throughout that time, I, I took classes, uh, especially with, with Darul Qasim. And then as of late, I was taking more classes. Uh, um, very few, I should say. Uh, um, um, but still, uh, I consider myself to be a student of Darul Qasim. Um, and, and yeah, and it's probably fair to say that, you know, I position myself very much in, in the Deoband uh, umbrella more than people might uh, realize. Yeah, man. Good stuff. So before we wrap up here, uh, not including Star Wars, top five movies of all time. Mine or uh, like Yours. my favorite or the best? I don't know. Your, your favorite. Um, okay, so I will I will preface this by saying there might be un-Islamic elements in some of these movies. So if you watch them, <laughs> hey. close your ears and turn off your eyes at the appropriate points. Mad Men looks always, we're big movie fans here. Okay. <laughs> There's an understanding that uh, we don't, we we forward through all the bad scenes. Just... <laughs> that is a, a good uh, understanding to have. Uh, I really like uh, Castaway uh, with Tom Hanks. Oh. That actually opened up roomy awesome. for me. That was awesome. Because uh, you know Castaway is all about this person who wants to get home, and then it opened up roomy in the sense that roomy. I mean, Rumi is basically taking Imam al Ghazali's teachings and then you know giving them in a nice poetic language. But the core of his teachings, which is the core of a lot of tasawwuf, is basically inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Right? We yeah. came from Allah and we seek. Uh, to return to Allah, even though we often speak of that that uh, that ayah in terms of loss, and and so that that uh, uh, was uh, facilitated a long journey into into uh, Rumi's teachings. Uh, I like Heat quite a bit. Al Pacino, oh, De Niro. Yeah, <laughs> that's my top ten. <laughs> okay, yeah. mashallah. And um, uh, what else? I mean, there's those movies that have to be on the list. Like, okay, The Message is on that list. <laughs> oh, no. okay. Come on, I, I'm I'm old enough where I saw Message in the theater. Wow. And, wow. and yeah. I saw it when I got older. I'm yeah. telling you why it was one of my favorite movies when Fatih Makkah happened because I was reading yeah. so much on Sira then it uh-huh. brought me to tears. When I was little, I oh, never understood it. Yeah. But when I saw Fatih Makkah, man, that just That's put awesome. chills oh, through my spine. But for me, the Omar series kicked yeah. like dominant. Yeah, I that. still haven't seen it. I want to put oh. in time because it's like it's 50 episodes. <laughs> so it's perfect I, I for Ramadan. It. Ramadan, because you want some entertainment during Ramadan, and but you're <laughs> See, like guilty. Brother, you know, my entertainment is the Quran. Yeah, I know, right? But. You know, it's a healthy way to get entertainment, I guess. But without... it's very informative. They have real quotes and everything. Yeah, and real, you know, yeah, yeah. I, I binged yeah. it in Ramadan last summer because we interviewed. <laughs> no, uh, that, that's, how, that's how they aired it. Yeah. yeah. They aired um, the yeah. Omar series. Yeah, it was like through Ramadan. So I usually right? take a week or two off in Ramadan from work. So yes. Adil Zeb, we'd interviewed him in Ramadan. <laughs> you know Adil, right? Yeah. Uh, so, and he was telling me about it. And he was, I never heard of it. I, I think I heard of it in the past thing, but I was like, whatever. And then I like got into it, and I was like, after tired of the week, because I wouldn't have work, so I'd stay up all night like, like, doing three or four episodes a night. It was <laughs> yeah. deep. Actually, uh, you remind me, Adil, I think is one of the first people who told me about MLI. Right, Adil's, oh. Adil's one of the good guys in MLI. You know, everyone. Oh, he. I heard he disagrees with it now too. He might. I don't know. Yeah, he I bailed mean, on Everybody, it. everybody hates Robbie, but I think Robbie is one of the people in MLI that I actually like quite a bit. Right. Oh. You know, you guys should probably interview Robbie at some point. That'd, oh, be, that'd be a really. really I interesting burned decision. that bridge, Homer. Okay. <laughs> I I tweeted out a few mean messages to her. Not the best idea. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, not the best yeah. idea. Yeah. Yeah. No. Anyway, let's get back to your movie. Yeah, so you, you movie. have two okay, more. Sorry, sorry. Um, message heat and cast away. You got two more. Okay, and I mean, well, I'm saying message Malcolm X those have to be on the list right but, uh, honorable mentions yeah yeah so um crouching tiger hidden dragon i like that quite a bit oh when it first yeah. came out that was awesome yeah, yeah. <laughs> visual effects were amazing um and i mean like what are the things i like about them like heat is very much asking you like you know what are you are you your career right that's what so much of the, of the film is about yeah. crouching tiger hidden dragon i love that especially in the teacher student relationship and you have essentially like the bad the the villain jade fox she's essentially i mean i don't want to offend you guys but she's essentially a salafi right <laughs> she, she's studying the material on her own and then you know coming to conclusions <laughs> yeah, 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 as opposed to following a silsila and such um <laughs> i like yeah, it what a yeah. nice uh, uh, what about you're not going to mention anything on matthew mcconaughey i mean well, that seems about? like a random like, well, what about he, his he, movie, bro? He, oh, movie? You, he's a big fan of Matthew McConaughey, I think. Like which movie? I mean, I, I like him quite a bit. Yeah. The uh, well, I I, I love the, uh, the the series. What was the series called again that we saw together? Oh, True Detective. Oh. True Detective. That, that was, was crazy. That was so good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm even forgetting the name of the movie. I love the movie I lo- so much. I liked, the, uh, uh, Contact. I love quite a bit. Yeah. That was good. Oh, um, yeah. No, his latest one, no, man, no, the three hour contact. long one. What was that called again? Interstellar. That was Interstellar. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that I was watch crazy. That one again. Yeah, yeah. Interstellar. I actually like Lincoln Lawyer a lot, too. I haven't seen that oh, one. Man. Lincoln Lawyer is actually that, pretty cool. Yeah. That was kind of a There was a time no, in no, no, my you film school days where I would watch, you know, I don't know how many hundreds of movies a year now. I mean, <laughs> if I make it to the theater like three times, that'd be, that'd yeah. be nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no Blade Runner? 
Blade Runner, I have to watch again. I saw the new Blade Runner, and, and I loved it in the same way I loved Heat. So yeah. Heat is basically, you know, are you anything but your career? And Blade Runner is are you anything but your, your memories, yeah. right? And But people were saying that if you're not a sci-fi nerd, then you're not going to like it. Yeah, I'd say that's fair. Right? Yeah. See, uh, what I, I, one I, of my I, friends saw it, and he said he didn't like it. I, I'm an all-around nerd in, in every way. So, yeah, and I don't yeah. mean that in a condescending way. I mean, I mean we're all nerds in our own ways. I, I condescend <laughs> myself. You know, yeah. I love Blade Runner because of all the different layers that they had, yeah. and they were so out of its time. Mm-hmm. It, they brought in AI. They talked about ethical things related to what makes us human. Mm-hmm. The first uh, one, it right? It was also a detective movie mm-hmm. at the same time. There's a remastered There's so version of the first one. Yeah, too, right? yeah. the final yeah. cut. I haven't seen the final cut. So yeah. I hope the, the people who are going out to watch the new one watch the first one before going to see the new one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dang. And uh, so I've actually never seen any of these movies really? that you've referred <laughs> yeah, to. My, my, yeah. This goes all over my like, head. Like, yeah. Anytime my, we talk about sports, movies, or anything. Well, actually, we're not sports. He's all about college sports. Yeah, no, so only o- Ohio State. Yeah, my, my top five movies are like The Terminator, <laughs> Varsity Blues, <laughs> Varsity Blues, Scarface, <laughs> Gone with the Wind, and Malcolm X. Gone with the Wind Gone and Malcolm X. That's yeah. like a good double Why don't you throw <laughs> Mary Poppins in there, yeah. too? Yeah. No, I, I'm like a closet southerner at heart. <laughs> okay, That's why no. I married a girl from Mississippi. Okay, okay I, see, I, see, I see, I see, I see. Whose name is not hot yet. Her name is not for those. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, I, I think you still owe me one, but I, I, I'll throw a Star Wars in there somewhere. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> you know, uh, and I told you last night that, like, I've never seen any of the original Star Wars. Yeah. Oh, you have with capital letters. I was I've seen all the um the newer ones because of Natalie Portman. How does that even happen? Okay, you, that, you should it. not share why, but okay. <laughs> yeah. You're opening yourself he, up He wants to, to do Dawa. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to do Dawa to the Yahood. <laughs> Seriously, man? <laughs> Seriously. I told you. I told you. No Seriously. filter. No filter. No yeah. filter. This is yeah. what you get. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I was actually up last night. Uh my wife comes down. It's like one in the morning. She's like, "What are you doing? Are you doing something?" Because I was taking no. You know this guy Bart Ehrman. Yeah, yeah, he's like this. He was debating some dude named James White. These like these b- biblical debates. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know. So watch, I'm taking yeah. notes because like. Um, I got this coworker. She's having doubts in her Christianity. Yeah. So I'm, I'm finna double down this week. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be over. Yeah. Oh I'm, 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 I'm about to crush her faith. Okay. <laughs> you know, there, there's some things we don't need to like boast about. That, <laughs> that's what I said. Yeah. You know you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah totally. Totally. You just yeah. got comfortable now. That's yeah. how. We'll... Yeah, Anyways, yeah, with sure. that being said, uh, Omar, Omar just like coming on. Oh, yeah, come uh, how you can uh, people um, find you on social media? <laughs> oh, I think they found them. They found yeah, them? Yeah. I think yeah, they know. found it loud and correct. Uh, I'm happy in any way I can provide any assistance to anyone. The easiest way to get hold of me is just do a Google search for Muslim Chaplain Loyola, and then you'll find my contact information there. And uh, otherwise, uh, anything that I can offer, by all means, inshallah. All right, man. I appreciate it. And the sad thing is she might listen to this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is what it is. I'll, I'll have to, like, give her a heads up that, like, yeah. by the way, I uh, – or you can just like edit out that part of the No, show. absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> like for me, my, my personal rule is like I don't want anything to be edited out. Sim yeah. sometimes does after and I'm like not down with it, but <laughs> we we would have been uh discredited and the laughing stock no, of that's so why many he's people. responsible for all this and you and me and yeah, no one else. Yeah. Is, he yeah. has to do be if, the if I next. if I was the only one in the charge of this podcast, I'd probably be like, Yeah, yeah. I, you'd be I, no longer here. Yeah. If you know, like no listeners, yeah, you uh, actually might get more listeners that way because I mean, you're just like, <laughs> oh, so man. we'll have to cater away. to a whole different crowd, though. Yeah, yeah. True, true. maybe, maybe. All right, yeah. well, uh, appreciate you coming on as always. Okay. We, we, we got some lunch and some pizza here waiting for us, so uh, yeah, we'll uh, baby. Yeah, let's say mashallah. <laughs> mashallah. mashallah. He's giving he's yeah. Omar Muzaffar's getting the uh, out of town treatment. Normally, we only reserve loose for like out of town guests, but you live in Orland Park now, right? Yeah, so it's like. That's it's a, that's far that's, enough. That's, that's far side enough. of town. Yeah, <laughs> out of town. Absolutely. Yeah, it's funny because, like, I mean, Luminati's. Every time I hear that name, I think of people who are controlling the whole the whole universe. The Illuminati. <laughs> the Illuminati. <laughs> Illuminati. <laughs> Illuminati's pizza. Right. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll, we'll wrap this up. If you uh, have any questions or comments, uh, you can email us at the at gmail dot com. You can follow us on Facebook and like us there. We need more Facebook likes. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter. We're on Instagram for our special guest, Omar Muzaffar, and my co-host, Sheikh Amr Saeed and Sim. This is Mahi signing off for the Mad Mamluks. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum.